before we jump into today's coloring now well actually I'll tell you about today's coloring first so if you've been watching my channel you might remember that we started with the Disney coloring book a few times in some past videos and today we're finally going to finish Dumbo <laughs> so in the past my first attempt at this and I do have it in here I colored this page from Beauty and the Beast and from a distance like for you guys looking at this on camera it actually probably looks pretty good but close up the page is quite um, strange the texture is pretty odd and the markers did some really funny things so I have a whole bit the whole video about that and the process and the distress that it put me through <laughs> in the process of coloring it I got really frustrated at this one um, it was also while we were in quarantine with two very young children at home for two weeks so it wasn't a good time to have things not go well um, but then I had another go because I don't believe in giving up on things and we did Ariel and that went so much better that was just a few weeks ago you can find that video on my channel as well and as you can see Ariel went much better and I was so happy with how this one turned out so you can see me color this entire page this was with the Prismacolor pencils which, which is um, what I am going to use again today for Dumbo but on this page I actually um, cleared over the sorry I covered up the black lines as well using the Faber-Castell pit pen which I do have somewhere here um, but you can find out more about that in the other video I won't be using that today because I wanted to try Dumbo with keeping the black lines to see how it looks keeping the black lines um, but if you do want to cover up the what the black lines I was gonna say white lines white pen black lines if you want to cover up the black lines this is the one that I found worked really really well for that so check out that video I'll get Shane to pop a link in the comments if you can manage that and otherwise we'll update the description later so that you can check that one out but today we are finishing Dumbo so I'm gonna take you through my process of when I'm trying to color from another picture like this it's a little bit different to just picking colors it's a little bit different to just making it up as you go along obviously you don't have to follow this exactly this is something that you can choose to kind of take it as detailed as you want you can just enjoy this and just color it your own way if this is a bit too intimidating but if you're like me and I personally love colors and I love really just diving into the detail of this original image that appeals to me so if that appeals to you as well today I'll show you how I approach that and we're gonna do it in real time with me so that you can ask questions as we go the one downside is that you also have to be patient with me because some of those things involves trying to find the colored pencils and it's not always an instant process and we can't cut that footage out when we're doing it live so we'll, we'll work through it together we'll be fine but the good thing is you get to ask questions we can have a chat you can ask questions about other stuff as well and we'll just have some fun and we'll just hang out and I would say we'll just hang out for as long as it takes but we might not because it might take a while so we'll just see how we go um, feel free to stick around for as long as you want you can also come back and watch this on replay if you miss anything and I will try to include as much detail I've got my little note sheet here about the pencils that I've used so that at the end you can come back and get the exact same colors if you really want to color along step by step especially if you haven't got the book yet hopefully that all makes sense <laughs> Shane do we have any questions yet no all good <laughs> um, while we're just waiting for a couple more people to pop in I thought I might show you guys in case you've missed it the last video that I put up on Wednesday this is another one that I've just created I actually really recommend an exercise like this if you want to get better at your blending this was a very very fun video and I've used Prismacolor pencils for this um, this was one that I did on Friday where basically I took um, different color palettes from my color catalog and I used the color wheel to create these different gradients with Prismacolor pencils and in that video that I've just put up on Friday so it's the most recent video on my channel you can see exactly which pencils I used to get this match and you can watch me color them and blend them and by doing this yourself you can actually see how I go about that process and by practicing it 
not only do you get these pretty blends, but you can also really, really develop that skill and get really, really good at blending your colors. So as much as this might feel like a weird exercise to do, I personally love doing it, but it also really, really helps that then when you go back to coloring something like this, all of these color blends and the color mixing is a lot easier when you do these kind of little practice exercises. So I know some of you wouldn't have seen this video yet because it hasn't had as many views as some of my other videos. So I would love if you could go check that out, give it a like, set, write a comment, maybe share it with a friend and have a go. I would love to see some other people. I've seen one person so far in my coloring group that has started copying some of these and they're already coming out really cool. I would love to see some more. So let's jump in. Are Just we ready? A question, Sarah. Yes. Kat has asked if you can use erasers on coloured pencils. You can, depending on the pencils. Um, erasers work on some pencils and not others. I actually never think to use erasers. I should, because there's a lot of times when I'm stuck and I don't know how to fix a mistake, it has never occurred to me to use an eraser. But I know a lot of other artists do. I have never thought to rely on that. Um, but that's something to test. And in fact, if you do look at not my channel, but other channels on YouTube, a lot of artists, when they are reviewing pencils, actually use that as part of their review process is they test the erasability of the color pencils. So you can find that information before you buy a set or if you already own pencils, just give it a go. Something definitely to try. So I have my, if you did watch my gradient video, my very, very old Prismacolor swatches that I need to replace because they are getting old and I've accidentally broken this one in two and run it over with my chair. <laughs> and um, I noticed last week that these colors have faded. So Prisma colors, you might not realize, aren't actually light fast pencils as much as I love them. Oops, that's even got something stuck to the back of it. So these are really getting a bit yuck, right? <laughs> it's time to redo them. But some of these colors, so like this purple, when I actually draw it is not the same as the purple on this swatch anymore. It has actually changed color. So that's one thing to think about when you are swatching out pencils, especially the cheaper brands that aren't light fast is the swatches actually won't last forever either. You might want to redo them maybe every year or two. I don't know. It depends on the pencils or just be aware that the colors aren't perfect anymore. But when I redo these, I'm going to do them like this instead. So this is what I've started doing for all my newer sets of pencils. Um, you'll see as we go through this video why I prefer this format. Um, but just to explain quickly, this used to be a big poster and I thought it was good because you get like a quick reference of the whole thing and you could see the colors to pick what you want. Um, but when it comes to matching a picture like this, it's much easier to have it in small strips with the edge cut right hard up against the color you've colored because then you can actually put it hard up against the picture and find a closer match. Whereas this, because they're all together, which is why I've now cut it into smaller strips, you can't quite as easily see. It's a lot harder to match the color, if that makes sense. So I'm still gonna use them, but that is one of the things that I'm going to do soon because Prismacolor is the pencil I use the most. So the fact that I haven't redone these is pretty, there's actually no excuse for it really. It's the whole plumber has the leakiest taps concept, isn't it, Shane? <laughs> that um, the pencils that I use the most are the ones that are not sorted in any nice pretty system and the ones that have the wrecked damaged swatches that have been run over by my chair. So, um, yes. Troy is asking for the gradients. What paper did you use? Okay, on that one, that was uh, Strathmore Bristol, but it was the 400 series. So it was slightly nicer paper. So you can do this on any paper, but see how these have come out really like a real paint like finish um that was i mean you could do this on cheaper paper anything you can do on anything but i chose that paper because a lot of the videos i've been doing lately like the crayola actually where is the crayola picture the um crayola 50k challenge that i did that was on cheaper cheaper paper with cheaper pencils and i've been missing using nice pencils because I don't get a lot of time to draw and color outside of the videos that I make. And I've done so many videos lately on using cheaper supplies that I just missed using nice supplies. And so that's actually the first time that I've used the Strathmore 400 series paper for a proper, 
art piece, I guess you'd call it an art piece, even though it was kind of just gradients. Um, so I decided to use it and I'm happy I did because it was very nice to work with, although it was a lot more grain than I expected. That was the only downside. So it did take a lot of layers, um, which I talked about in the video. All right, I think we need to move on. I will um, answer some more questions as we go. So I've already done Dumbo and if you want to try and color Dumbo as well, I do have the numbers here. Um, and I've got a closer picture of that in my Facebook group. But when I'm done all of this, I will actually, uh, in the comments of the final video, not the live comments, I'll get all of the numbers put in the comments. They might change as we go, but I'll try and do that for you guys <laughs> so that you can have that reference. But we might start on another part of the picture. Um, I do also have here, so with my pencils, it gets pretty messy as we go, but I like to try and keep the colors I've used so far to the side because these colors, if I use them again throughout the picture, it creates a bit more consistency. So if I need another gray, like these elephants, I'll try the gray that I've already used first instead of picking a new gray because that it's more likely to be the same gray because that's what generally happens when someone paints a picture is they would try and use the same colors. I hope that makes sense. So what should we start with next? Can I actually get some um, opinions in the comments? Um, who has a suggestion on which section we should do next? And while you guys make that suggestion on which part of this picture we should color next, I want to say a quick thank you to, <laughs> I'm not going to say this name right. It looks like it says Berserk Griffin. I hope I've got that right <laughs> for the $5 donation saying, I uh, forgot to comment the 50K video, congrats on the 50K. So thank you for that, that's really nice. Um, now, how do you swatch if you don't have the same paper that's in the book? That's just another question. I actually just, I don't worry too much about that. I don't find the colors of the pencils change that much that that will matter. I do tend to, like, that's something that I find that if this book ends up different, because I start coloring quite lightly, I adapt as I go anyway. So I don't rely that heavily on the swatches. Like I'm not going for perfection. A lot of the stuff, especially something like this, you're working in white, light layers. So you'll go darker and lighter. I'll start with some colors, but then I'll add a bit more as I go. You'll see that as we go through today. So I've got, we've got a few people saying, we've got zebras, tents, but I see quite a few people saying elephants so far. So I think we will. I think we'll do the elephants. That makes sense to me. Because we've done one elephant, let's do the other elephants. I'm not sure if we'll get time for this whole picture, so let's jump straight into our elephants. So what I like to do is grab my terrible swatches here. I might even, let's see, here we go. And just find what, at a first glance, looks like the kind of colors that we'd be looking for. Now, the thing about Thomas Kincaid's pictures is that there are a lot of colors in this picture. So this elephant is not one gray. There's actually like six or seven different colors in this. I'm not sure how well you can see this without a big close up. So we'll just try as much as we can with this footage. Um, but let's use this little part here as an example. Actually, can I just show you Dumbo as an example and then we'll come back to these elephants. So his face alone here He's gray, but if you look at this section here, we've got a dark gray, a medium gray, and then up here we have like a light blue. And then in his face, we've got a yellow, and then we've got the yellow has to blend back to that gray. And there's almost a slight pinky tone where it kind of blends back in. So you've got blues in here, you've got gray, you've got almost like a pink undertone. So you could either pick like, uh, you could either try and match that pinky purpley gray or you could use a pink pencil layered on top of a gray to try and get that color. Um, and then you've got the yellows in here. So there's a lot going on and that's what makes Thomas Kincaid's pictures a little bit difficult to copy. So that's why we just work in as light layers as we can, which is a bit tricky on the thin paper, but we just got to try and having sharp pencils will help as well. So with these elephants here, luckily they look a bit simpler. So we're just gonna start by finding what is the basic gray. So I don't really wanna draw on this, but I do wanna just use a pencil to try and show you here. So we've sort of got a few different sections here. We've got a dark bit here, and then we've got almost two different grays on either side. We've kind of got 
well, it's, it's, they're both medium gray, but if we were gonna go dark, medium, and light, I don't know if you can see that difference there. Hopefully we can. Um, so we'll try and find what these three different colors are. We might be able to use the same color and use like a white or like a yellow or something to lighten it, but we'll just see how we go. And then as we move up, we've got a few little lighter highlights, a few little darker spots here, so we can kind of build them in. And as we move over this way, the colors here, are very similar to the colors here. So if we can find these three main colors, the one, two, and three, that should be enough to get through most of this picture because the shadows here are actually very similar to that one shadow down there. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Hopefully it will make more sense as we go. The other elephant here has a bit more yellow to it. So we'll come to that one second. I think we just start with this one first. And then when we get to this elephant, we might look at adding those bits of yellow in first and then doing the gray over the top and seeing how we go. So let's figure out what this gray is. Now I do have, like I said, it's much easier when you put it hard up against it here. So this 1056 is actually a pretty good gray for that dark gray there. Now, even if it's not perfect, we can layer other pencils as we go. The 1054 is also pretty similar, so we might grab that as well just to sort of work between the two and see. And then we want a lighter grey. Now the 1052 is not quite right, but we might be able to use that colour and add some other colours into it. Because once you actually compare the 1052 to the grey here, what I would say is that it's almost like this is the 1052, but it looks like it has some pink in it. So, again, I hope you guys are following along here because this is a little bit complicated. <laughs> um, so the 1052 here is in here, except that it looks like there's a little bit of pink in there. So we could grab this and try and layer some pink on top, maybe try and layer some of these darker bits on top as well. And I think we could actually get these color, this color using these colors here. Does that make sense? Oh, have we lost everyone, Shay? Please comment and let me know if you're totally lost or if this is making any sense at all. I will start coloring and it might come to life as we go. This is how my brain works. I don't know if this makes sense on camera. <laughs> so let's just go for it. This is why I like to give short videos where I can script it out and explain it in a bit more detail and give you guys detailed graphs and things. Now these colors you'll notice, I didn't even realize this, these 1054 and 1056 are actually the same colors as Dumbo, which is what I was saying before, that it's good if we can use those same grays rather than pulling out a new gray from our set. So that worked out perfect. I'm just gonna write these down here as well so that we have that reference for later. So we said we are going to try the 1056, 1054, 1052, and then we're gonna try and bring in a pink and because we've got some pinks here from Dumbo, I think we'll actually try one of those pinks. And this is where, let's have a look, what have we got? I think we've got 1092. This is where it's gonna get a little bit harder to judge, but we might just have to have a go. So we might just try that 1092, which is this one. I'm just gonna write it on here and we'll just see what happens. <laughs> Experimentation. Now these pencils need a bit of a sharpen. So they're actually not that blunt, but the sharper the better. Although with Prisma colors, you do have to be careful not to go too sharp because they will um, break if you go too pointy is more. It's not too sharp, it's too pointy that's the issue. sharpener today in case anyone's wondering. Okay. Yeah. Also sorry if there's some background noise here. We actually currently have rain outside and we're actually in a very busy street. Um, so you don't notice it when we film because we have to stop and start our filming all the time, but live streams, we can't do that. 
So we get a lot of trucks, we get a lot of dogs, we get a lot of stuff that comes through. So you might cop anything today. So I'm going to try and block out this shadow first, just lightly though, because then if we make a mistake or if we go too far, then we can always kind of come back and work it in. And then we'll build in our other colors and see what how we go. While you're coloring, um, someone's asked if you use fixatives. I only bought my first fixative a few days ago. <laughs> I um, should, and I want to, well, it's not that you have to, but I am very curious to learn how they better preserve your work. And I know that some workable fixatives would have solved like that problem that I had with this. Sorry, there's a massive truck passing. Um, some workable fixatives would have really helped with that. So I actually would like to explore fixatives a lot more, but it's not something I have used yet. Um, so you will find some stuff coming up soon with that. Okay, so that's where that main shadow pretty much is. We'll just soften the edges a little bit just by pressing a bit lighter on each of the edges. I'm also going to block out some of the other shadows around the elephant at the same time. So I'm just trying to copy the darkest areas on this and copy them in this. The good thing about this is they do give us some lines that sort of help where those shadows are, but a little bit of it is just guesswork. And if you get some of this wrong, don't stress too much because the busyness of the whole picture kind of helps to hide any little mistakes that you make. So you don't have to worry too much if you mess up a particular spot or if it's not perfect. Once you complete the whole picture, it will look good. Even if one little area isn't amazing. And with all of this, like if you're ever uncertain, just start really light with as light pressure as you can handle. If you struggle with the pressure, hold your pencil further back. And that way it's a lot easier to, to make adjustments if you use that light pressure. This is actually looking browner than I remembered. It, it feels like a browner colour. I think that is almost the paper. I mean, it, even this, I guess, is a little bit browner than what that is. But um, in my head, I thought it was going to be a bit more grey than brown. It's probably not noticeable on the screen. Now there is a very, very, very fine like little highlight on the edge. So I'm not sure whether I might try and keep that. We'll see how we go. <laughs> With the Nina Bristol vellum, mm -hmm. are both sides of the page the same? think so I've never noticed a difference it's a good question though because some papers um, some papers do have one side different I'm pretty sure most Bristol vellums are the same on both sides though I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure that it's the same on both Have you ever thought about doing a free coloured pencil course? Well, pretty much my entire YouTube channel is a free coloured pencil course, isn't it? <laughs> pretty much everything I have to teach you guys, I intend on putting eventually in YouTube videos. So doing another course would just be a distraction for us and would just take more time away from creating more videos. So I love the idea, but the further that we stretch ourselves, the less attention we can put into these videos. Um, and I just don't want to do that. I want to be able to give our best to this channel. Um, we're even looking at cutting back on other stuff so that we can give more attention to this channel and give you guys our best because that's what we want to do. Great idea though. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you can see what I've sort of done here. I'm really just um, copying each of the shadow areas around here and we've sort of copied that on the elephant. I've probably missed a few, so, but that's one of the things where as we start to color the rest, um, more bits become obvious. So we just fill them in as we go. 
So that's fine. For now, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I've just spotted a few more around the face that I didn't do. I'm also working with um, studio lights. Sometimes I, it's sort of reflecting off the page. So sometimes I miss things as we go, but we'll come back to them as we go. So now I'm actually going to grab this lighter pink and just put those little spots that I said that I noticed that had the pink in them and then we'll come back in with those mid tones. I'm a little bit conscious of spending way too long on one thing on this page because it's going to take us forever to do this whole page if I keep going at this pace but I also don't want to rush it. <laughs> Oops that's probably too much pink. I think I've gone too heavy. That's okay. He's very happy colorful elephant. <laughs> it's all good. The good thing about the Prismacolors is they do kind of blend together okay so hopefully we can um, kind of fix that up. Although this paper doesn't allow for much layering that's the only thing with this paper. It's a little bit less forgiving than some others but that's okay we can make it work. So now I'm using my lighter grey. I'm just going over both those colours. That's actually diluting the pink down as well, quite well. So that actually was okay. We're all good. What kind of sharpeners do you recommend to use? So I'm still in the process. I, I'm actually, I had the sharpener video planned for like, what, four months ago now? But we've had a few sharpeners that just keep getting lost in the mail. We keep reordering from different sellers. The same sharpener has been lost in the mail multiple times. Um, so today I'm using the M&R sharpener, this one here, which is very similar, you might notice, to the Dahl 133. So both of those are very good sharpeners. Um, the good thing about the crank sharpener is that it is easier on your hands if you're sharpening like a lot of pencils. Otherwise, I also like the, um, the Teagull sharpener. It's a little handheld one, very portable that actually works surprisingly well for how cheap it feels in your hands. Um, in my Crayola video, I also used the Spara Long Point, which was, it's not good for Prismacolor because it does too much of a sharp point for a Prismacolor. But here is another brand new one because they come in a pack of like 20, <laughs> but they're very cheap. Sorry, I said Aspara again, it's actually Apsara. Um, these ones do a really good, they're a really good long point sharpener for what is just a tiny little sharpener. But I've got a bunch I'm trying, but I think my personal two favourites at this point are probably like the m and and the Dahl and the Teagull. I've really been liking them. Um, as a general works for most pencils sharpener. They're the ones I find myself going back to when I'm just looking for something quick. So... But that video is coming soon. We were almost going to film that this week, except that those sharpeners are still <laughs> waiting on being lost in the mail. And it was a pack of like four different ones. So we can't even just sort of do it without them. <laughs> They'll get here eventually, maybe. All right. This is really looking a lot more brown than I thought. I might need to bring in some blue. Gray is not as um I need like a blue gray. Did I have a blue gray here? What's this? These are like a green gray. These are what I used on Dumbo. Let me just check. So that's more of a blue gray. So I don't know if you can see the difference there. I've kind of got that's very blue. That's got a bit more brown to it. Kind of want to want to bring in a bit more blue gray. So I might layer some of these, I'll just keep working with the brown at least to get this first layer down. But then what I might do is actually layer some of my blue gray on top because I feel like there's a bit more blue in this than what I'm getting. Which I think is what I did for Dumbo because he looks a bit more blue. So that's just something I might do. So I'm just going to write them on my list so that you have them as well. No, it's not something you have to do. It's a little bit of me being... Well, you could say perfectionist, but I don't know if that's what it is as much as I just really like colour. I really like accurate colour. <laughs> How do you choose which two colours to blend together to get those colours? Uh, um, I just keep looking at them. <laughs> and 
I don't know. After a while, you just start to learn. You, I, I, I just see them. I see the colors. And um, like I, I looked in that gray and went, well, what color is missing? What, what's the difference? It's almost like maths. If, if you have 10 and you've got seven, what, co what number is missing to make the 10? After a while, when you're looking at colors enough and when you use colors enough, you start to see color like, like a maths equation. You start to see, I've got purple and I'm using red. So if I add blue, then I'll get the purple. And you start to just see that the more you use colors. Um, so a lot of it is just trial and error and just being brave enough to just give it a go and just test it out and just experiment. Doing things like those gradients will help with that as well because you start to learn what colors make other colors, what colors you get in the transitions, all those exercises and things. And just the more that you color, the more that you'll get the hang of those kind of things. I'm just going back now. I've noticed that some of these lighter areas um, have made the dark areas quite light as well. So I'm actually going back with my darker color. Although again, I feel like it's quite brown. So I think I need to find a different dark color. What's this one? Oh, that's very dark. Hmm. Yeah, what I'm gonna do, let's add it to our list. I'm going to take our really dark color, very lightly though, and just use it to darken these shadows, but just in a light pressure. This is where, like I said, this only really needs three colors, but I've already added, what, like 10 pencils here? This is probably a bit unnecessary. This is my way of doing things. It ends up creating a lot more depth in the color by using so many colors, but it makes it very hard for you guys to follow on, I'm sorry. Um, it's not the simple way, that's for sure. But that's why I thought it'd be fun to actually do Dumbo real time instead of just watching a short video because it is interesting, I guess, to see the process and see, you can see now why these, these, some of these pages take me like 12 hours because I spent a lot of time just fiddling, getting the colors right. When you're using markers, do you wait for the markers to dry before going over it in pencil? Yes. Do you want to tell me who's um, leaving the comments as well, Shane? Sure. Sandra is asking how the paper's going this time around. It's, um, it's like, it's fine compared to the first time. The issue with the first time was that I laid down that ink and that ink just changed the paper. This is not great paper, even for pencils. It's too shiny. Um, there's no tooth. That's, that is the main issue with this paper. It, it does work really well. Like, it still feels okay, but um, because there's no tooth, the pencils, you only really get like one thick layer. So it does make blending hard. I wouldn't recommend using, um, well, I was going to say oil-based pencils, but not all, not oil, not all oil-based pencils are going to have that issue. I wouldn't recommend using something like Crayola or... Maybe not even polychromos on these because they require layering to blend your colors. You need to use a pencil that can blend on its own. That's why Prismacolors work well because they kind of allow you to blend just by pushing the color around. I hope that makes sense. Um, usually, you, I mean, Crayola is actually wax-based, not oil-based, sorry. <laughs> that was really confusing the way I said that. But a lot of generally oil-based pencils require more layering and therefore they are not going to be ideal for this um but that's all changing lately there have been a lot of budget oil-based pencils that have come out that are actually acting more like what we would generally think of as wax-based pencils okay i'm not i'll be honest i'm not really happy with how this is coming out i think it's because i'm partly distracted <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing the uh live stream slash coloring well today so i'm bringing in some white to try and lighten this up a bit <laughs> okay i think i need to bring these blues in sharpen this one I'm not in my zone today I'm a bit distracted <laughs> all right let's um let's bring in the blue on this side so now at this point I'm really just pushing the wax around there's no tooth left in the paper to grip the the color is just pushing like on top of the pencil on the layer of wax um, 
That's alright, it still works. It's just different. It's not like colouring on normal paper. Okay, and what I'm using here is, I might even come in with a white gel pen to get these final little tiny highlights, but I've just got the white pencil to try and lighten up some of those spots around those areas. Okay, I'm a bit happy with that now that it's got a bit of blue in it. I think that's a bit better. But it did, see if I had gone straight in with the blue, it would have been two blues. So having the blue mixed with the brown, it was actually kind of perfect um, to match Thomas Kincaid. Again, whether you actually need to match him, that's just a personal preference. I don't think you need to. I like to. That's, I enjoy the challenge. I enjoy the challenge of matching the colours. Um, but I think that can be really intimidating if, you're, if you've got this book and you just want to colour don't feel like you have to go this intense. You don't have to try and match every little bit that he does because you'll end up going crazy trying to get the colours this perfect because his stuff is paints. <laughs> it's not pencils. And he probably uses, well, you can just see the variety of colours just in the one object, all the different blues and pinks he uses in a grey. It's, um, it's a lot to try and replicate. So... Now I'm just literally going between colours. Sorry, I'm not updating every little bit. Um, just to try and fill in these shadows again and to try and match those different spots where it's a little bit darker, a little bit too blue, a little bit too pink. I'm just kind of working back and forth until I'm happy. Another thing I've noticed with, and this is an example here, these colouring pages are not an exact match for the picture. You can see here the leg ends before the trunk there's a gap in the middle whereas in the actual painting there's no gap so it's never going to be a perfect match because the picture's actually not the same <laughs> i might just hide that bit because it's like shadowed gavin has asked what your toned paper recommendations are for colored pencils toned paper i've only ever used the strathmore toned paper i've never used anything else so i don't really have Recommendations for you, sorry. And Leanne has asked if the original paintings in this book, were they painted with oils? I think so. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I think so. Someone else actually might be able to answer that. Someone who might know more about Thomas Kincaid. And Kat has asked a very Australian question. D's or doggies? I don't know. I don't go for either of those teams. <laughs> this, is, this is for the Australian Rules Football Grand Final that's coming up. We do have a family member who goes for Melbourne and we're from We're from Melbourne. Melbourne. But then Western Bulldogs are also a Melbourne team. Yeah. I, as a child, so there's sort of this unwritten rule that if you live in Victoria, that you have to follow an Australian football league, an AFL football team, as, as a child, as a human being, as anyone growing up in Melbourne or even just anywhere in Victoria. And so I grew up as a child and it's like every time the games came up, it was, well, who do you, who do you barrack for? Who do you, who do you support? It's like, I don't watch it. I don't care. That's not, an, that's not an available answer. You don't get to answer that. So as a child, I just picked a team based on the colours I liked. So just to stop people asking. <laughs> and, but then as I got older and Shane had his team, which was Tigers, and my dad also went for Tigers. And so now that we had to allocate teams to our children because children don't ever really get to pick their own teams. Their parents force it on them. <laughs> That's how it works, isn't it? So we're a Tigers family. <laughs> the Tigers didn't make it this year. Okay, I think we're, we're getting there now. What do you guys think? We're sort of almost to our first one. Um, he's starting to look a little bit, he, she, they're probably, actually I think these are the mums, aren't they? she starting to look a bit more like the elephant in the picture here. 
So the body, I think I'm done. It's a little bit lighter than probably the picture. It's okay, we'll just darken that up. Um, this bit here. So I'm actually adding a lot of layers, but they're not really doing a whole lot. They're just very light layers of pencil on pencil on pencil, because again, they're not actually going into the paper. But it works. That's the main thing. How long have I spent on this one one elephant so far, Shane? <laughs> the stream's been going for 45 minutes. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> minutes in and we haven't even finished one elephant oh no that, that tells, tells you how long it takes for us to make a video yeah now so remember that whole aerial page i did <laughs> yeah this is this is the reality of how long we spend on a page let alone how long it takes poor shane to cut up all the footage of of all the drawings that i do with his three different camera angles of the same thing so huge, huge kudos to Shane for cheering Shane on for all the editing because he has to watch it all. And I'll be like, hey, so there's a part where I do this. Can you just cut that out? And he's like, where? <laughs> Can you watch it and find it, please? Thank you, Shane. Alexa has asked what paper you would use if you were copying the page onto another page. Oh, it depends how professional you want to go. Um, I do have a whole video about paper um, because it's such a big topic. Um, I have a lot of different thoughts on that. It's a difficult one. The paper that I most commonly use if I'm printing something is the Nina Bristol Vellum just because that fits really well in my printer <laughs> um, and it's easy. But it's not like, and it's also affordable, but it's not the best option. If I really wanted to create like a masterpiece out of this, I would even probably hand trace it onto something more like your Strathmore Bristol Vellum and like the higher quality ones and use like my Caran d'Ache pencils or something. Um, I mean, the thing is, how far do you want to go when it's originally someone else's painting? Because you couldn't sell it or anything because of your copyright issues. So I guess it depends how far, how, how detailed do you want to go? Um, but yeah, some kind of Bristol vellum is what I would choose because then that's going to give you the tooth, but it's also going to give you that nice thick stock. That's generally what I recommend for coloured pencils. And there are a few affordable Bristol vellums. I do talk about that in that paper video um, that you can actually buy in bulk or you can print on that's just a bit more affordable than the sort of artist level stuff. So that's what I do a lot of my other videos when I do colouring pages that I print off or my own colouring pages I do on those. Alright, I think we've probably spent enough time on this elephant. <laughs> See, I do enjoy this though, otherwise there's no way I could sit here and do this for 45 minutes. <laughs> okay, I need to do the little tongue though. What colour is our tongue here? Is this the right colour for the tongue? It's kind of close enough at this point, I think. Let's just do it. All right, so that's just the same pink that we used, even though it's not quite perfect. It's such a small item that I'm just going to embrace that. And then we need a dark red for in the mouth. Um, I will just grab a swatch to just pick because it's quicker. I reckon our 937 looks like a dark enough red. So that will be one of my dark reds here. Here we go. Oh, it's not sharp enough. It's not going to get in there. <laughs> this... One of the reasons you need really sharp pencils with this book is that the details are so small. Here we go. There we go. So now the last thing I like to do is the just little white highlights and um, you can use a white pencil or you can use a that pit pen, although I only have the thick one. I need to buy a thin one. Um, in the other video I did, I showed how that actually does really good details that are a bit more like these clouds, like the sort of not, because the I'll show you what the white gel pen and the white paint pen do. That's what I'm going to use now. The pit pen we'll use in the clouds a bit later if we ever get to that. <laughs> um, otherwise, if you want to see that in action, I use that here on the tail area and around here. 
I use the pit pen for some of those white highlights because it creates almost a cloudy effect rather than the really bold, like these drips on Ariel. They were done with, uh, no, they were done with the paint pen because the gel pen didn't like this paper either. <laughs> this paper, it's all good. We can still work with this paper. So I'm gonna use the paint pen. Just got to load, oh, it's already loaded, so we're all good. And I'm just going to do those tiny little details, although they are quite bright. So I like to probably not wise do it with my finger, but I do it anyway. Just kind of dab them to lessen them a little bit. So they're not as bold. Probably should do this with like a cotton bud or something, but that works. Oops, I kind of smudged it. Again, this is probably why I should be not using my finger. <laughs> Ashley is asking um, that, I, like, I know that you recommend Arteza colour pencils for beginners, but they don't have very big sets. So what others would you recommend? Arteza, I thought they had a... Hang on, I thought they had like a 120 set. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. I actually... I have a few friends that asked for pencils for beginners. I actually recommend it to them to get Prismacolor. But then I've had people tell me off for recommending Prismacolor for beginners because if you're used to um, sort of like if you've grown up with just normal pencils, the Prismacolors feel quite different um, because they're that really waxy pencil. So if you're serious about coloring and you're a beginner but you want to get into it, I'd go straight for the Prismacolors personally. Um, just be aware that they will feel quite different. If you want something that's a little bit more like what you're used to, actually some of the cheaper ones I've reviewed lately, like the Brute Funa and the Marcard, are surprisingly good. I actually think the Marcard, I was really impressed. Um, and they were a really good option for beginners because um, they felt more like a normal pencil, but they're also affordable and they have really, really good color. So, and they were pretty close to the Artezas. So I'd actually sort of almost recommend them over the Artezas at this point. Okay. Now, do we, because <laughs> I've taken so long, do you guys want me to color the other elephant or do we want to try something different? Because <laughs> this is your stream as well. And um, yeah, I don't want to keep you here all day. <laughs> so um, let me know in the comments. We'll answer some more questions while I'm waiting for the reply on that. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to color next because there's a fair bit in here and um, I really don't want to spend what looks like 12 more hours on little things and everything. Um, so let me know. I'm just going to take a quick drink while we do that. Shane made me a nice smoothie today to keep me going. <laughs> Gavin has asked um, earlier on if you have any special tips for beginners with Prismacolors, but also what cheaper oil-based pencils would you recommend for a wax pencil artist? Sorry, <laughs> lost a bit lost on that. Sorry. So, what cheaper oil-based pencils would you recommend for a wax pencil artist? Yeah, and also if you have any special tips for beginners using Prismacolor. Whew. Um, okay. And then we'll look at the, the request from people. I think with Prismacolors, the main thing is to remember that they... It, it, it really just comes down to practice, I think, more than anything. Um, it's the same tips that I would recommend for everything. Having a sharp point... Um, although with the Prismacolors, you don't want to go a super long point. Um, getting good paper. The Prismacolors, you don't want paper with like massive tooth. You want something in between. So just a little bit of tooth seems to be perfect. And other than that, it's really just practice. I think with Prismacolors, you just got to be aware that because they're a bit waxier, um, you actually, I find them easier because they're waxier. I feel like they're, they're easier to learn because you can get a lot of color out of them and you can blend two colors really easy just by pushing them around. So I actually think that they're easier for that reason, which is why I recommend them for beginners. Um, in terms of the oil-based, I again would suggest the marker as a really good budget option. Um, I was really surprised when I tried them and how good they were as a budget option. They're probably one of the few budget brands that I've bought that I've actually thought oh, I might use these again. <laughs> Whereas a lot of the budget ones that I've bought have become my props up here. So <laughs> that's, um, yeah, a lot of the budget ones that I've bought, I sort of I've only bought for you guys so that I could review them. The Mark Art are one of the few ones that I actually went, wow, these are really good and would recommend them. So, um, and the Brute Funa, but I think 
Oh, I don't know. I'm on the fence about which of those two I prefer. Depends on the price. I know sometimes they are budget and then they the prices fluctuate because so many people buy them that the company goes, oh, let's just double the price. And then they're no longer budget pencils. And then I would no longer recommend them because if they're going to cost the same as something like your Prismacolor, I would buy the Prismacolor. That they're no longer worth that money. They are good because they are really cheap and yet still perform really, really well for the price. Do we have a verdict on what we are going to do? Let's have a look. Um, so, Shane, can you see? I'm going to have a quick look as well now, but let me know if you can see any overall recommendations because I'm seeing a lot of comments now. Um, I think almost, almost everybody suggested, suggested something different, so there's no <laughs> consensus at the moment. Okay, let's, let's list a few of the options. Maybe we can do a poll. Can you create a poll? With some of the most common options. Um, so Mark Art, uh, Caitlin is spelled the first way that you spelt it. Mark, M-A-R-K-A-R-T. Um, and for Sandra saying you only have Prismacolor Premiere. I only had Prismacolor for like the first year that I owned pencils and I pretty much only bought other pencils a year ago. So don't be ashamed of only having Prismacolor. Other than my little, you know, my little set of polychromos, which fills this one cup. <laughs> Actually, some of these aren't even polychromos. Sorry, it's half of these. <laughs> Other than that, I only owned Prismacolor until a year ago. And the only reason I started buying everything else is because of this YouTube channel. So only owning Prismacolor is nothing to be ashamed of. It's actually very good. Okay. So the elephant, zebra, tent or background. No, oh, you, what about the train? Someone suggested the train. That was a really good idea. <laughs> oh, I got lots of votes for the background. Oh, the background, why? <laughs> That's fair, actually. The background is, um, is a tricky one. Why would you do this to me, people? Yeah, no, the background. Oh, that's actually a really fair call. Um, let's talk about the background since that seems to be the consensus, but it will just give a few more people voting time. Is that, um, how do I see the rest of the poll? Yeah, it looks like we're heading that way anyway. On up at 50% have gone for the background, followed so, by the 10 at 24%. So I think you're doing the background. Yeah, all right. <laughs> let's just embrace the background. Why don't we put up a poll for what to color next now so that people can take their time to decide what's next. Um, after the background, we can put up either the, um, maybe like, we, the tent's kind of part of the background anyway, isn't it? So let's put up the, the train, the zebra, and maybe the road, because there's some different, I'm just looking at the different elements that would be interesting to color. Okay, the background. Now, um, usually with this background, I would probably want to cover the white lines, uh, the, the black lines with the white pen um, because they have included a lot of uh, lines here to help us with the clouds, but there is no sign of those kind of lines here. This is probably the one exception in this picture where I do want to do this. What do you think, guys? Should we do it? Um, because the rest of this picture, as much as it doesn't have the black lines, they kind of work to frame the characters. They kind of... They work in well, but I feel like this background, I just, oh, I don't know. Okay, actually that feels like a more important poll. <laughs> Can you do two polls? <laughs> no, only one poll at a time. So this is for uh, what's colour next. Train, zebra or road. Train's at 49%, road is at 37 All right, scrap that poll. <laughs> you, you want me to end this poll? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're scrapping the poll. We are doing a new poll as to whether you would like me to keep the black lines or get rid of the black lines in the background. While, while we work that out, I'm gonna start finding the colors that we need because whether we keep or get rid of the black lines will totally change my approach here. If we keep the black lines, I'm going to have to be creative with building them into some clouds and it will look quite different to the Thomas Kincaid version. If we get rid of the black lines, then we will pull out our pit artist pen and it will be more like what I did on the aerial one. So it will look more like Thomas Kincaid's. 
So you can vote on that in a second. And meanwhile, I'm going to grab some colors and pull out our sky. Let's have a look at what we've got here. So we're going to some lighter colors now. So I can see, let's just have a quick glance and see what you guys think as well. But from here, I can see at a, just a guess, some colors like this kind of color throughout here. Um, this, this kind of here, this kind of color in here. I don't know if you can see that there, All right? And if you can ignore all the colors in between, just look at the sort of end color. So we've got this color here, we've got a blue. So now this is without me using the swatches, but we'll come back to the swatches. So like this, but maybe lighter. Um, so we could grab this and add some white to it, or I can find a lighter pencil, which I'll maybe do. And then there's like a darker patch here, which you might not be able to see on camera, which even has a touch of pink in it. There's even a few little patches of pink here that I think he's added. And then there's a few little patches here that almost look like they've added like a white on top or a lighter patch of yellow. And then there's some lighter yellow again and some like that light, like this kind of color, but very faintly splattered throughout underneath. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So this color we've already used throughout. So we're gonna pull that without even looking at the swatches. And I think this color, let's just have a look. I think that's actually a very good color to bring in here as well. So I'm going to straight away use those in the sky. Let's just move all these back onto our tray. But I will look at my swatches to see what other colors we can see. So now one thing you might have noticed already, and you can tell a bit more if you actually look at the pencils I've pulled out, the colors in this are not very bright and it's not, it's funny because when you look at this picture, you notice the light and you notice how bright it is. But when you actually stop and look at all the colors, it's a very muted palette. It's this odd thing because you look at these pictures and you see, the, you see the brightness and the lights. But when you're actually looking for the colors, there's a lot of gray. All these colors, if you look at them, this yellow is not a bright yellow. It's like a gray yellow. The, the orange is a brown. It's a gray yellow. The pink, it has a lot of gray in it. It's all very muted colors. And I think we're gonna find the same with the sky. So instead of looking at my bright yellows, I'm actually looking at the muted, almost pastel, but not bright pastels. They're like gray pastels. So same with our blues. Let's have a look. So the 1012, which I think is that color. No, that's a 140 that we've got. So the 140 is this color here. That's the one we've already pulled out. So that fits really well for there. I reckon that 914 might work for that really bright section. So let's see. Oh, that was easy to find. It's not usually that easy to find. These are all too bright. That 1012 is not that different to the ones we already have. So we don't need that one. Um, now we're starting to get too dark. So that's probably it for that page. I think we need some more people to vote on this poll. It's 62% for getting rid of, but it's, it's quite close. So there's almost 200 people watching this and only half has voted. So get your voting. Thanks for that little push, Shane. <laughs> no way. All right, so 939 we've already picked. So that's that one there. So that's perfect for that. So that darker orange goes in there and that is the color that kind of sprinkles around here as well. Um, 997, I think that's pretty similar to the 140. It is, it's just got a little bit more red to it, but because we've already got these two colors, we pro probably don't need that color as well. But I can't help myself, let's just get it anyway. <laughs> um, and I haven't really got a blue yet, have I? I've probably got enough like light colors i need my blues where's the blues i feel like i'm missing half a page of my blues i am it's ripped i literally am okay well none of these look right they're not gray enough where's the other half of my oh here it is it's okay we have it now none of these blues are quite right so we're gonna have to get creative here oh wait there's another half torn page up here 
Do I need to say again that I need to use swatches? <laughs> Still none of these blues are quite right. So this grey here is kind of in the right direction, but it's too dark. But if we can do some light layers of that and maybe bring a lighter colour or a light grey or a light, even a white on top, we might be able to lighten that colour because it's the right hue. Can you guys see that? That it's it's got the right base colour. It's just, if we look at it against, so ignoring the yellow through here, because that will come from our yellow pencils. If you can try and eliminate, subtract the yellow, that blue is close to the right hue. It's just too dark. So if we can work out how to lighten that colour, which is actually one of the easier things to do than trying to change a hue, then we can use that colour. So, 1025. Here it is. So this becomes kind of our palette. And I think we need a bit of a grey, which will help us to lighten that colour. Um, we've got... 1050 and 1068 are both sort of light greys. We might need another light blue, but I think we'll just start with this. What's this? 1060. That's not what I want. That's like a yellow grey, and I'm not actually sure if these greys are going to work, but I'm just going to take them anyway and figure it out because if our layers are light we can make it work I mean you can already see if you look at these colors just next to each other they look like they would make a pretty sky so that's a good sign <laughs> I'm gonna write these down so I'm writing them down more for your reference but it just helps we come back to this that I've got this all and I will put I'll, I will try and put all these in a comment later to help you guys if you do come back to this video nine, three, nine. and actually let's just try so that I can show you what I'm planning with the blue let's just try actually seeing if oh that is quite dark <laughs> okay this might be one of those times where it's faded Oh, yeah, look at that difference. Okay, so this is again a situation where my swatch is faded. And the faded is the colour I want. It's not actually how the colour is. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> That's disappointing. Okay, we're going to have to make a grey blue. So, how do we make a grey blue? I think... Grey and blue? That seems logical. Let's try it. So we've got a blue and we've got that's a grey. Sharpen them a bit. Let's just do a test on our test paper. Colour maths we can call this. When you're doing the sharpener review, are you going to be reviewing electric sharpeners as well? Not this time. I already have so many sharpeners, and so I'm just limiting it to manual sharpeners. Um, I haven't actually tried an electric sharpener. I should, hey. Especially when I'm buying a new set of pencils and having to sharpen 200 of them at once. Okay, we're just doing our blue with our grey on top, just to see, or maybe our grey with our blue on top. I'm putting quite hard pressure though, I probably should do this lighter. Sandra's suggesting you use 1023. 1023 you reckon? What's 1023? Thank you for the suggestion. Where is that? 1023. Mm. Ooh, good thinking. Because that, it would be interesting to see how much that one's changed actually. It's not quite the right hue, but we might be able to make it work with this other one as well. So that's quite, um, so the reason I didn't grab that one immediately is because it's a little bit more purple. Oh, purple's not the right word. Um, the blue's a bit, oh, I can't even think of the word, but let's try and add, if we can actually, that might make, oh, good pickup. Good job. 
If we add the gray to that blue that you've suggested, the 1023, by yellowing that a little bit, so it's it's too cool, it's too, I was gonna say purple, but it's just because I'm trying to think, it's not warm enough of a blue, it's too cool of a blue. This gray is actually, a, it actually says warm gray. <laughs> um, this gray that I've chosen is a warm gray, it's got some yellow in it, so by adding that to our cloud blue, how perfect! The blue you chose is cloud blue. There you go. Um, it's actually warmed up that colour, which makes it the perfect colour. Problem solved! That was Sandra, wasn't it? Was that Sandra you said? Yes. yes. Thank you, Sandra. Alright, so our sky blue is... 1023 plus 1050. Thank you, Sandra. That is our perfect cloud blue. <laughs> okay. So let's go. So, what are we? Are we getting rid of them? Oh, it's close. So I just tipped over the bin again under my desk. It's the second time I've done that since we started this stream. Okay. Oh, it's only like 57% of the votes. It makes me think maybe we shouldn't. There was one suggestion on there that said that you should get rid of the lines in the sky, but yep. not everywhere else. Yeah, that was what I was thinking. Yeah. So I'm just getting rid of the cloud lines. So I'm not going to get rid of the rest. Cool? All right, so let's do it. So I've got my Pit Artist pen. And we're just going to go over all the ones up the top. And I'll try and do it quickly because otherwise we're going to be here forever. While you're doing that, Kat has asked why you should sharpen pencils when they come pre-sharpened already. Yeah, um, when they come pre-sharpened, a lot of them actually don't have a sharp point for one. So I like having the sharp point. But also when they come factory sharpened, some of them um, have a thin coating on them to protect them. Um, and so you'll just find you don't get the best results using them straight like that. I actually found that there were a few brands that I was quite disappointed with and almost wanted to return. And then I sharpened them and it was like, oh, these pencils are actually really good. So <laughs> sharpening your pencils makes a big difference. And factory sharpened is never... Like if you look at the point on these compared to the point you get from factory sharpened pencils, they've always got like a flat end on the points. I've never seen factory sharpened pencils that are actually pointy. The flat end is actually not very nice for coloring. I don't recommend it. So I'm doing this quite quickly, but it's drying pretty quickly as well. And it's very easy. I just do wish I had a thinner version of this um, pen because then it wouldn't be wasting, like it wouldn't be going on all this other area that doesn't need to. Have you ever used Karen Dash's watercolour pencils? No. That's the Neo colour, I think they're called. Oh, Shane, look out. There's more Karen Dash stuff I don't have. Sounds, Sounds expensive. expensive. Shane bought me, it's sitting behind me, the Karen Dash pastel pencils. And the other day I finally said, you know what? Because I, I have the Karen Dash luminance, but I only have a set of 40. Um, and I said, you know what? These are the pencils that I actually love the most. And I only have a set of 40. And I don't have the Pablos. And everyone keeps asking me about the Pablos. I think it's time that I just buy myself. Because I bought all these other cheap pencils. And I, I, I just I want to draw with the proper pencils. I think I've earned them mine now. I think it's time to buy the Pablos. And I think it's time to buy myself the proper set of the 90 or 70 or whatever. The 70 something that is available of the Luminance. And they were at a good price. And so I went and bought them. And he's like... But I already bought you the Karen Dash. I was like, no, that's pastel pencils. That's different. He doesn't even know that there are other products. <laughs> Same thing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Shane. There's so much more money to spend on pencils that you don't even know about. <laughs> Will you be creating printable colour swatch charts? Yes, I thought I'd have them released by now, but all of these lockdowns and, and everything that we've had here has really, um, really thrown us behind in what we would like to be at. So I do hope to have them by the end of the year, hopefully sooner, um, but I'm working on it. The ones like, so I will be offering this one as a part of it, even though it's not the best thing, but 
people that still want it and I'll offer these versions as well that you can cut up as cards and like my plan with this is you could even like laminate them and ring bind them to make it easier and I'll have a bunch of other ones as well and I'm just going to put it all together and make it really cheap so that you can just use it for all your brands okay I do want to make this a bit lighter I'm just aware that I probably should let it dry a little bit or it's going to start to warp the paper so just give it a second might have a drink give me Shane, why would you go to the full camera of me when I'm drinking? That's gross. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready for our next lay. I kind of just don't want these clouds here. I just wish they didn't even put the clouds here because his picture doesn't really have defined clouds almost at all. And they've gone and added all of these clouds. Most of the other details in this are really helpful. This is the one bit. I kind of just wish they left the background blank. That's okay. When you organise your colours, do you sort them by number or shades of colours? I think I could probably answer this. You just don't organise them, do you? <laughs> I do organise them. I just really badly don't put them back where they're supposed to go when I'm finished with them. <laughs> I organize by color. Um, I love things being organized by color. The problem is when I go to do something like this and then I realize I need them organized by number and then it's like I'm torn because I'm visual. I like things being done by, num by color 100%. I would just wish that the numbers would be more logical with the colors. <laughs> Can you mention what the name of that white pen is again? Faber Castell Pit Artist Pen. Though I do recommend probably getting the smaller size that they offer. They offer, they, I think the smaller size comes, this is like a felt tip, but they also have a brush tip. I don't know which of those is better. I think I ordered one, or did I put it in my cart and not check out? I'm not sure. I think it's coming. <laughs> I never know what's coming for Amazon anymore. I can pop a link in the description when we're done. Okay. Can you guys still see those lines? I can, but is it enough? The more I do this, the better it'll be at the end. I just don't want to waste all this time. Um, someone's asked about the marker base. I recommend a marker base in most cases, but not in this book. I found when I tried doing a marker base, there's just not enough um, tooth. And, I, I, like I found because this requires so much shading, I ended up doing so much shading after adding the marker base that the marker base became pointless anyway. I like to add a marker base if I'm wanting really bold, vibrant colors. And I think because this color palette, like I was saying, is quite a muted palette, the marker base I found didn't really help all that much. So it does depend on the picture you're doing. I think it's fun to experiment with both. I, if you would like to see a marker base, I do have a few videos where I've done that. So when I did the, what's an example of a picture I've done that? I did um, Princess Tiana. There's a video I've done with her and I did a marker base for that. I did one on Bluey, which is an Australian cartoon, which we all love, probably more than our children. <laughs> and for that one, I did a marker base. Um, ones like that, I love it because it speeds up the coloring. It takes a 12 hour page and takes it to like five hours. <laughs> um, Again, you don't have to spend that long just because I like detail and I get lost in the process. Um, maybe next time we do a live stream, we should do a marker base. What do you think, Shane? <clears throat> Sounds good. Guys, let me know what you'd like to see in the next live stream because obviously this is a time to really get to see um, the process of something in real time. We don't do a lot of real time stuff otherwise on this channel. And so if there are specific things that you would like to see in a live stream, this is your chance to let me know because we are, yeah, keen to do what you would like. Okay, while that last one's drying, I'll just sharpen these few pencils and then we will start coloring. They should be pretty dry pretty soon. I think these pencils are mostly sharp. See, I used to count that as a sharp pencil, but now I'm realizing it's actually worth just sharpening it a bit more even though it means my pencils are getting much shorter. <laughs> Put a little some of them are. <clears throat> I have to 
say though, I'm actually excited my pencils are finally getting short. It's almost like a celebration of having used them. <laughs> it's almost like um like a trophy of yay, you use this colour enough that it's finally short. <laughs> except for except for this one, because it's only short because it keeps breaking. <laughs> It's my one dud Prismacolor. It's the one, you know how everyone has that one pencil that just breaks every time you sharpen it. That's that one. I despise that one. I avoid using it. All right, oh, that one just broke. really dry yet but we can work around them while that dries so we might no we weren't going to use that dark one I might just keep it for these really dark spots but we weren't otherwise going to use it I've got to stay away from these wet spots until they dry so I'm just going to build up some of the color around them for now to sort of plot out these other areas I can still see the black lines, so I'm sort of like, if I had more time, I might stop and really, actually I'll colour down here first because it has nothing. I might stop and really black, like white them out more, but I just don't want to take forever. So I'm going to start. Um, the thing here again is, I don't know how much you can see on the video, but there is like 10 different variations, even in the colour down here. So me being just wanting to do the detail is like, I want to do all the blotches and everything to match. Whether you want to copy that or whether you just want to kind of just do the one solid colour, it's up to you. Um, I'll try and replicate it a bit without going crazy because I don't want to take three hours to do this background. So we're just going to do light layers again and I'm just literally using the colours that I can see as I see them. And by starting a light layer, I'll build up. If I feel it's getting too dark, I'll stop. And we can always, if we like the color where it's at, but it needs to be like flattened out, we can always get out like the Prismacolor blender pencil and just use that to sort of flatten the colors. I don't think that'll be necessary, but we'll see how we go. While you're doing that background, we've had a super chat from the silver leaf who's done a funny dancing, is it a pair with a party hat? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your little $5 donation there. That's really nice. Thank you. It's awesome. So here I've just noticed through here, there's a lot of sort of this orangey color. It's, it's very subtle. So again, I don't know how much you guys can see in the video, but it's just subtly coming up here. So I'm just doing it up here with the intention that when I bring in my other colors, it will be blended in. So by doing that light layer, it'll blend easily when I bring the other colors in. So this is something you'll just get better at with practice. By doing it light, it'll blend in quite well. But the blending part is where just the more times you blend, the more times you do gradients, you'll just get better at that. This is just something that you get better at with practice. I actually probably wouldn't have been able to do this a year ago. <laughs> it's, um, I think because I've been drawing every week for the past year, my skills have improved. And so that's just something you just got to stick at and you will get better at it. Don't be intimidated when you see other people draw. Just remember that we can all get there. Mary has asked if you could use a white gel pen or white pencil to go over those black lines. Um, I have tried. I actually started doing that in my previous video when I did Arial. So where is that? This one. The thing is here, I use the white gel pen up here and I don't know if you can see it, but it actually, the, it almost resists the pencil. So now that I've finished this, I can actually still see the white gel pen in those spots. Whereas for the rest of this picture down here, I didn't, I used that Faber Castell pen and you can't see it underneath. So you can try other methods. There are definitely other methods. And I think it probably depends on the paper too. Some paper would probably react differently. Um, in my case, I just found that with this paper, the gel pen just wasn't working. So that's why I stumbled across this and 
been really happy with it. So again, I'm actually just working really light layers and I'm also working in a circular motion. Um, it probably looks like I'm going back and forth, but I'm going back and forth in slight circles as well. The circles just mean that you don't end up with those uh, obvious sort of scratch marks like lines. Um, that's something that you just get used to a technique again, uh, more and more drawing. You'll notice that more if you watch that last video where I did all those rainbow gradients. If you watch that closely, you'll notice that circular motion a bit more. And I try to change direction a lot as well. Um, it just helps the blending look more smooth and you don't notice those directional marks as you go. Um, again, it's just something you've just got to practice and get used to. And there's also some little patches of blue in this sky. Almost. It's, it's, there's just so many colours in this. It's, and it's not until you're sort of looking at it closely that you start to notice them. Have you ever used the Prismacolor Scholar pencils? I've heard about them. I haven't used them. Um, from what I've heard, they are, they're they not anything like the Prismacolor Premier. They're more comparable to, um, I guess, like your, your basic Faber-Castell Simple Range or maybe a little bit better than your Crayola, but sort of a bit more comparable to that. Um, they're not aimed at artists. They're aimed at that real, not even students, they're aimed at... I'm not going to say kids, it's not right. They, yeah, scholar. Scholar pencils are not aimed at artist levels. So I probably wouldn't recommend them based on what I've heard. Doesn't mean you can't do good art with them, but if you're going to spend that money, I think there are a lot of other options that will give you better results. Do the Prismacolor sets come with a blender pencil? Mm, don't think so. I've never seen a set come with a blender pencil. But no. I think you can buy them for pretty cheap on yeah. Amazon. Yeah, they come separately usually. You also don't need a blender pencil. I've only just started using one recently. Um, it can help. It means you can sort of just like, um, you could just use a blender pencil over this rather than using the same pencils again and again, but it's not essential. Okay, so I've just added that bit of blue there to try and add, it's very subtle, put a bit of blue through here. How do you think white out would go on the white line, on the black line? Uh, I probably would avoid white out because it is a bit harder to control. Like you'd probably, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of different white products you can try and I definitely recommend trying them, but maybe not on a piece that you're really wanting to keep. I've tried a few different options and I've tried a few in, in some recent videos as well. Um, different inks and different paints are gonna react differently with different pencils, with different markers, and with different paper. Like it's, I've seen some artists that highly recommend stuff and then I've tried it and it's failed. So a lot of it depends on just what you're using. So get, like experiment, um, have a go or Google and see what other people have tried. You've got a testing page in that book. <laughs> yeah, I had a page because the paper is such a thing. So in this book, I literally, it's, it's here and it's all kind of stuck together. No, that's blue tack. That's why it's stuck together. It's okay. Um, this is my testing page where I tried a bunch of different things just to see what would cover up and what wouldn't. And some of it just really didn't work. I, From what I know about whiteout, I don't think it would be a good idea. But, I mean, you could give it a go. If it's all you've got, might as well give it a go. Just don't try it on something that you love. <laughs> yeah? Try it on a page that you really don't care if you ruin. And then that way, it's... Yeah, the worst thing that can happen is you lose a page you weren't going to colour anyway. The best thing that can happen is you discover a new art trick. Alright, so we're getting somewhere with this lower section. So see, I'm still just building up the layers just bit by bit. The colour never quite looks right at the start, but the more layers you add, the more the, the closer it starts to get. And once I've kind of put in all those variations in colour, then when I get my main colour, which I think is this colour, sort of, almost, I can then start to go a bit harder with that colour because the rest of the colours I'm sort of happy with.
So I think I need a bit more grey in this even. Or is it just... I do a lot of adjusting as I go. I'll sort of hit a spot and be like, oh, just he looks darker. Something's not quite right. <laughs> And this is why I like realism drawing because I just I like things to be like exactly the same and so I love the concept of just realism because I've just pulled out a darker gray because some of these spots I feel like could just be a little bit darker I thought that was a quick way to get there um, from the grays I've already used um, yeah I think I love realism for that reason because it's like I just I'm fascinated with the concept of being able to recreate something in exact detail that really appeals to me again that's not for everyone so you definitely don't have to go to this much effort and this much detail. This probably feels horrifying to some people to put so much time and effort into a simple colouring page. I wonder if this pink might be a bit more... Maddie has asked um, how Melbourne's going and if we're still in lockdown. <clears throat> um, we are actually just outside the metro border ourselves, so we have been released from lockdown... Kind of. <clears throat> kind of. What, a day or two ago? I don't even, I lose track. It feels like it just never ends. <laughs> oh, we're in less lockdown, lockdown in the city. Yeah, we're in less lockdown. We're still kind of in our own type of prison. <laughs> we, were out, we were allowed to go out to dinner last night, except that we had to sit outside in the freezing rain. cold <laughs> in the rain because the restaurant wasn't allowed to have us inside, even though it was a big empty building and there were enough seats and really warm space but they weren't allowed because they had too many other people in the big empty room so you know that's that's weird it's now do you have any suggestions on how to press lightly with prisma colors but still get smooth results um pretty much what i'm doing um i don't know how to how to answer that i guess the sharper point definitely helps um and you do build up, like you build up more pressure as you go. So the first layers need to be light. And then as you're, as you're building layers, you can press more with the, the later layers. That's really the key to the smooth results. You don't want to press hard straight away. Um, but as you're building up more layers, you can use more pressure. It just takes practice, really. Um, if you watch that last video where I did these, you'll see this in the thumbnail. That, I mean, you can see how smooth they have, sorry, I should hold it down there to be in focus. You can see how smooth they've come out. That video is like, what, just 20 minutes of me doing them. So you'll see how I do them and the process and how I'm holding the pencil. And, and if you watch that and just practice doing stuff like that, you will get better and you will get smoother results. And that's with Prismacolor. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Have you ever thought about doing a colouring book where you include the coloured examples next to it like that book? Um, I don't think so for me um, because I, I this is different because you're looking at something that is someone's creative work and they've turned it into a colouring book. The problem with this in most colouring books is that it does take away a little bit of the creativity for people. Um, it restricts people to thinking they have to copy this and I know a lot of people are intimidated by this book because they feel like they can't use their own colors um, So many people have this book sitting on their shelf and they don't try it because it feels like you're not allowed to color it unless you color it in these colors and um, I actually love seeing everyone color my stuff in all different colors because they think of stuff I would never think of I would hate to restrict that because people copy me um, I find it much more exciting to see what other people have come up with. So I don't think I would. I love seeing what other people come up with. All right, so I'm starting to move up now because I'm pretty happy with this lower section. I think the color, it's, sometimes I find it easier to look because I've got a screen in front of me. Sometimes I find it easier to look at that to see if the colors are the same because I'm too close to this and because of the way the lights are. I need to like, um, I guess if you're looking at your own work, sometimes you need to stop and look back. So sometimes I look at the screen because that's like my, my far back thing to see, to see it. Angel has asked, when did you start YouTube? 
Um, well, we, we just did a video about that, actually. We, um, offic un unofficially or officially? We officially started YouTube almost exactly a year ago. Um, I, before that, have a few videos. You'll see them on my channel if you go right back. Um, where I did some videos to teach things that are on my blog posts on my website because my website's been around for just over five years now. Um, teaching different things with colored pencils, teaching some of the stuff of how to use some of the stuff I sell. And I wanted to help people with that stuff. So I made some little videos here or there and I use YouTube for that. But in terms of actually making this weekly series that we now do, we've been doing this for just over a year it was a year as of last week last week the week before last week the 3rd of september whenever that fell i lose track of the days <laughs> especially especially in this season of life um why am i using that color that's probably not the best idea let's move back to our blues oh i'm kind of regretting having dumped that big chunk of gray on there whoops that's what happens when i'm not paying attention um, yeah, it's not that long. Tina has said that she has a hard time deciding with some colours if it's a medium, a light or a dark tone. Is there a rule that would help with that? I'm a little bit confused by what you mean. Um, do you mean like when you're looking at a pencil that you're trying, or when you're looking at, I guess I need to know what, what your reason, if you can maybe explain a bit more detail, why you need to know that. Like, what are you trying to work out? That would help me to answer. What problem are you trying to solve by working out which, what the colour is? There's another comment on here asking about, um, it's again about how you organise the Prisma colours because they have a case that holds 120 pencils um, and holds three pencils in each loop for a light, medium and dark tone and they okay. want to know how to organise them. That's a different comment. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that would be a whole video on its own really, wouldn't it? Yeah, I never thought to organise them in that way of matching them up in um, almost like blending groups. Um, I guess you could choose to order them if you wanted to. If you found that you commonly colour just off site and you like to have that light, medium and dark tone in a colour, you could try and match them up with colours that blend well together. That's probably not something I would do just because I I can do that on the, on the fly. If that's something you can't do on the fly then it might help to actually have them pre-grouped like that um, you could even have swatches made up that help with that um, that might actually help answer that other question a bit as well that if you if you're struggling to work out what the light and the dark tone is of a color if that's what that question was about if you're looking at this color and you don't know how to do the shadows if that's what you mean then maybe that's um, where you could find swatches and you could almost create like a cheat sheet that helps you with that kind of thing. Um, in terms of organizing them, I guess the, the limitation to that is that then if you need those colors for anything else, you've got to go hunting for them and they're not really in a color order and they're not really in a number order. So I think you just got to organize them into what way feels right. And that might mean reorganizing them a few different ways and just seeing how you go until you find something that works. So Tina said, um, when trying to get the colour blend, some colours look like they could be both a light and a medium tone and that it's the colour tones tripping them up. Well, yeah, because some colours can, I guess, yeah, that makes more sense. So, um, I mean, colours can be a light and medium tone because it all depends on your lighting. So I guess you're not going to, like, let's use this colour as, well, let's use a more obvious one. Um, so this colour here is an orange, right? This could be this could be a light like a light tone if you're looking at a red, but it could be a dark tone if you're looking at a yellow. Okay, so if you were to put this next to this, this is like a dark tone. But if you're putting this next to this, then it's like a light tone. So it all depends on the context. So if you're trying to figure out what this where this color fits, you are gonna have trouble. And so that's where that shouldn't be your goal. 
Okay, that because it is all um, is subjective. The right word <laughs> is that the right word? I'm, my brain's starting to get a bit mushy here. Um, it all it all depends on the context. Like even in this picture of Dumbo, this his face has got yellow in it because there's yellow lighting, and so that yellow, this yellow here, is actually grey. He is a grey elephant. He's not a yellow elephant, but yet we've used yellow colours, and so. But yet we know that he is a grey elephant. So colours and everything are all changed. They're perceived differently depending on lighting, depending on shadows, depending on so many things. So that's where you have to not get too caught up in, in pencils and things and sorting them perfectly into different groups and things because different contexts when you go to use them will change whether that colour is a mid-tone or a light tone or a dark tone because it depends on what you're using it next to and it depends on the context of where you're using it. So I wouldn't get too caught up on stressing over categorizing them in the perfect way. I think just put them where it feels right to you at the time. And then as you're using them, you might find that, okay, that doesn't, I don't actually use it as that. So then just move it. Um, I think if you get too worried about sorting them in the right way, you're never actually going to end up using them. And I think that can be a bit of a trap sometimes is that we get so worried about like the perfect swatches and setting up our collections and organize i mean you can see my my prisma colors i have stored in cups and in my drawer and right now i've got them sitting on like four different trays that they never normally sit on from what are four different other brands of pencils these trays don't even match because that right now is the most practical during this video but it's not how i normally store them and these are the pencils i use the most and yet i don't have like a specific system for them because my purpose is to just use them. <laughs> so I haven't found the perfect system for them and that doesn't stop me using them. I think that's the main thing is don't let a system or a lack of system stop you from enjoying your pencils. Just find a way that works for you and if it's not perfect, don't let that hold you up. Deborah has asked, who is the dreamy voice narrator? I'm not sure she's listening to the right stream. This is the, the last dreamy, thing I would describe my voice as. The dreamy voice narrator is a shame. And yes, he has a dreamy voice. <laughs> Never have I heard anyone describe my voice as that. Your voice is dreamy, Shane. Embrace it. Anna has asked realistically... He's taken. <laughs> Anna has asked realistically, how long does a page like that take to colour? Oh, it depends if you're taking your time like I am and enjoying it and, and just like being a little bit of a perfectionist. Oh, look, I'd probably spend 12 hours on this. In saying that, I never, I used to be horrified at the idea of spending like even eight hours on a colouring page. I was like, what? People are crazy. Why would you? <laughs> that was, I was like, I would never have the patience for that. And it's not even like something you can sell. Why would you spend that much time on a hobby? Times have changed. Um, no, I think, yeah realistically this probably will take me a while I mean you can see how long I've already spent on these little bits um, I think when you really enjoy the process of something you do take a bit longer and I think this is why I as much as I love budget pencils and it's great I don't really recommend that people go crazy buying a lot of budget pencils I actually think it's better to go and save up your money and buy a good set of pencils because if you're gonna really enjoy coloring and spend this kind of time on it you want to enjoy it I when I did that Crayola picture um, I couldn't do that for more than like 40 minutes at a time because it just wasn't fun it was it was it was hard but it was not pleasant on my hands um, like the Crayolas did the job but they weren't fun to use whereas when I use my Prisma colors or when I use my Caran d'Ache I just I just kind of escape into it and I just love it when you're using a handheld sharpener, do you mm -hmm. twist the pencil or the sharpener? I'm naughty. I twist the pencil, but you should twist the sharpener. <laughs> it's easier for me to twist the pencil, but if you twist the sharpener, you will protect your pencils more. So you caught me out. All right. So I am having a little bit of resistance here, which will be fine if we use a light pressure here against the white that we've covered the lines with. So I can still see the lines a bit. I think once we do a few layers of the pencil, it will cover up. So I do probably need to speed up my process a bit, but we'll see how we go. 
Hopefully no one's sitting here going, man, this is boring, I'm taking forever. You can always come back, watch the replay and set me on fast forward if it's really, <laughs> if it's painfully slow. <laughs> Did you want me to put a poll up? <laughs> put a poll up. This is painfully slow, Sarah. <laughs> I'll tell you what though, I'm never going to say again about anyone else's hobby. Like I used to say it about diamond painting and stuff that I would never have the patience to do that. I think after hearing other people say it about me and my drawing, it's like, you know what? It's really unfair to say that about anyone, about saying I never have the patience to do that because actually you have the patience to do what you love. So when you build the skills and you take the time and you, you practice something and you buy the right equipment, you do have the patience. It's a choice. And now I do have the patience for stuff like this when I, you know, use the supplies I love and I'm enjoying myself. And for me, the matching colors is, is part of what I enjoy in this process as well. I do have the patience to sit here and do this for like eight hours and, and barely take a break. And like, I, I actually love that. Um, and I get that that isn't for everyone, but then you, that's because I love this hobby. And in the same way, there are other people that could do other things for that amount of time and not take a break and that's just what they love so i've sort of made it a goal now not to say that about other people's hobbies you know it's like just because i don't just because i haven't made the time to learn doesn't mean that it's fair to make that kind of comment and say oh, i never have the patience for that because it kind of belittles their work as well it belittles the work that they've put in to growing those skills i think we've got to be more careful the stuff we say on social media sometimes <laughs> I'm still seeing these black lines a bit more than I'd like, but mostly they're not too bad. Would you ever think about um, editing that a digital version of that page and taking out the black lines and reprinting it so that you don't have the resistance from the pencils? Yeah, I mean, look, you definitely can do stuff like that. The, the difficult thing with that is it's not... The, the difficult thing is it's not really clear how that works with copyright. And I, I'm really big on um, following the law when it comes to copyright because I would like people to do the same for my work. Um, and the rule with books is like I, can, I could give this book away, sell it and whatever, and because it's in the book, that's, that's fine. But as soon as you actually make a copy of it, it's not really clear. Like if you go and print it and reprint it, it's not actually really clear how that now is protected under the law in terms of when you've adapted this artwork and, and redone it. So I'm not sure. <laughs> I mean, if I was to never give away this book, maybe that would make it okay. Um, I mean, I probably wouldn't, but I don't know. It's a, it's a difficult one. I'd be interested to sort of know how that would work. It'd certainly make it easier to colour, but you did it do would. that with the kids colouring. I actually, yeah, so with, um, I actually did that with um, uh, the Princess Tiana page because I, that page was not from a book, that was from Disney's website. So I printed that straight from the website, I actually printed it lighter and of course everybody commented, not everybody, some people commented that I cheated because I lightened the lines, so you can't win. Um, and then what did they say when you had trouble on the other Disney And line? then on every other page, they're like, oh you should have just lightened the lines. Like, you can't win. <laughs> so on that one, I was apparently cheating for lightening the lines. But I, because that was from the website, you obviously intended to print that. So that was fine. And I did print that and I lightened the lines on the computer before printing it. And so we did that for Tiana. And I actually thought that came out really well. Um, so it's definitely a good option. You just got to find out, like, if you've got a book like this, you've got to sort of... Technically, you should be getting permission from the artist to do that if you're going to be making copies. So it's just about working out what you're allowed to do, really. It's one of the reasons why, like with my colouring books, I sell printables. I, I do have my books on Amazon and you can buy them, but Amazon's um, paper, like the, the paper that they offer with the Amazon colouring books is not the best. So I also offer all of my books as digital PDFs and that way people can just print it on whatever paper they want. 
Um, you don't have to go scanning it and all stuff like that. You can actually just print it straight from the website as a PDF. Use your own paper. That way you don't have to print all the pages. You just print the ones you want. It just saves all of that mess and it's just easier. And if you make a mistake, you just print it again. <laughs> so you can experiment a lot more. A lot less pressure. All right, so now I'm kind of just hitting this whole thing with sort of the lines have dried. I'm getting a little bit of resistance. Again, this would work a lot easier with a paper that had tooth because then it wouldn't be as hard, but we're just working with it. So I'm just going to start building up these colors and using my light layers and we'll see how we go in developing this color. And we'll just keep talking while we do that. So if you had permission from the artist, would you digitally lighten the lines so that you could colour it? Yeah, I think that would probably be the easiest way, rather than trying, sorry about the massive truck that just passed, I don't know if you guys heard that. Rather than using any of these things, lightening them with the computer would definitely be the easiest way. And it means you don't have all the extra stuff on your page that you don't need. So yeah, that's, yep, 100%. Have you ever thought about making your colouring books with lighter lines? Um, well, my colouring books, the art in them so far is probably not aimed at this kind of realism. Um, in the future, I'm not sure. It's sort of, I think the more I colour, the more I sort of change what I would like to do in a future colouring book. It's a good idea. It might be something that I can offer in future pages that I can offer an alternate version that has the lightened lines. It's actually a really good thought. Hmm, you got me thinking. Maybe we can offer an alternate, like even for the downloadable ones, a different version that has the lighter lines for people that don't know how to do that themselves. The difficult thing with doing it in a printed book is that not everybody wants the lightened lines and for some people that would be really intimidating. <laughs> so it's a tricky one. This is probably too dark. Let's go back. This is where I end up with scribbles all over my page because as much as I've chosen these colours, I forget exactly what this colour is because they don't quite match the pencil. Most of the time they do, but I just want to be sure. So I do these tiny little scribbles everywhere just to be sure. So what I've sort of noticed with this white stuff is that if I push too hard, it doesn't apply. So I need a sharper pencil and light pressure. But I think because I've already pushed too hard on this, now it's not going to apply anything. So I kind of stuffed it a little bit in that spot. We bought some workable fixative though, although I don't really know if I want to experiment at this point. Hmm. It's all right, we'll just leave that to the end and see how we go. I think this is the time of day when we suddenly get a whole bunch of trucks coming past. We need a new studio with like soundproofing. <laughs> Are you a fan of Disney and who is your favorite character? Have you ever been to Disney World and what's your favorite park? Oh, I've never been to, I've never been to America, little, actually, we, have, we haven't been to Disney World in America, but we've been to, is it Disney World in Paris? Disneyland, Disney World. I don't know. I think Which it's Disneyland. I think it's Disneyland. Which was, is where the Mickey in your background is from. That's where this is from. Mickey, can you see him? I'll bring him over. Mickey, here he is. Can you see him for a second? Shame, we'll switch the front camera for a second so you can see my Mickey. No, you can see him, can you? 
There he is. My Mickey. He's my special souvenir from the one time we went to a, a Disneyland in Paris. And um, uh, Oliver, who is our little two-year-old, it is his absolute favourite character. So every time he comes up into the office, he points and he goes, Meow! That's how he says Mickey Mouse. Although this week he's now saying Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so he loves it, but he's not touching it. So Mickey's our very special souvenir over there. But in terms of favorite character, oh, that's hard. I actually really do like Ariel. I think she was my favorite growing up. So that's probably just, just special. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of options. I do like Disney in general, though. I've always loved Disney. There's just something special. I love their character designs. I love, and I love Pixar. I think as a teenager, I wanted to work for Pixar when I grew older. It was like a little dream I had for a while until I realized that that would probably involve moving to America and leaving my whole family. And then I was like, oh, maybe not. I'd still like to visit America one day though, but I don't think that's going to happen for a while now <laughs> with the world going on. How do you smoothly layer Prismacolors? I think you're going to have to watch my last video. <laughs> I, know, I know that I keep sorry, referring to that. It's just, it's hard. It's easier to just show you than to try and describe it. But really it just comes down to practice. It comes down to light layers, a sharp pencil, and just, um, yeah, hold, holding holding your pencil further back allows you to do it a bit lighter. But then it's just light layers, sharp pencil, and practice. Um, but that last video where I did all those gradients, all these ones, that is that's the smoothest I've ever laid Prismacolors. And we did some of the video really fast, some slow, some really close up, so you can see it in a lot of detail of how I actually did all of those with Prismacolors so that you can try to replicate that. I've even given you the colors of each of those things so you can actually have a go at them for yourself and see if you can do them. And just practice stuff like that. I practice doing gradients a lot. Um, I used to practice them a lot because I did videos like those blending videos and I had to draw a lot of gradients, but it's ended up being really helpful because now that's the one thing that I seem to have done so much that I've gotten quite good at it and it's helped all my other skills by practicing doing those blends. So I recommend doing something like that. It's a good exercise. For someone who already has Prismacolors, what would you recommend as their next set? Well, if you're willing to save up and um, happy to spend a little bit more money, I would suggest Polychromos as your next set. Um, because like I said earlier, I don't think it's worth buying a whole bunch of budget sets I think you're better off to save up and get a really good set. And I actually think the Polychromos are a really good complement to the Prismacolor because the Prismacolor already do a lot of blending well, but the one thing they don't do well is fine details and holding the sharp point. And that's where the Polychromos really shine and they have that really good, and they're really high quality. So that's what I would get to complement them. Those are the two first sets I owned. And I mean, the Polychromos only have a very small set, but they're still... My favorites, I think, other than the Caran Dash. The Caran Dash, the Luminance are kind of halfway between those two sets. Need to drink. When we're allowed to, where is the first place that you would visit? Hmm, we're talking international. I think so. I am pretty keen to go to America, actually. I, um, I've been wanting to go to America for a while. Probably not with our two young kids. <laughs> but they'll be older by then, so it'll be fine. They'd love Disney World, Disneyland, all those places. So maybe. I would love to go to America. Just... Go to all the craft shops. You guys have so many craft shops in America. We get none of that here. <laughs> Is that weird? I just want to go to America to buy stuff. <laughs> have you ever done graphite drawings? 
Um, well, I used to only draw, I mean, not properly, but as a kid, I only drew in black and white. I only had cheap sort of sets, but um, I only discovered pencils a few years ago with my first set of Prismacolors. So, yeah, when I was a kid, I used to just sit and sketch with a single graphite pencil. That's all I really ever did. Um, have you ever done blending with Gamsol? Yep, I have a video about all the different blending tools and a blender. Got a bit weird. If you check on my channel, you'll find a blending. If you do search for blending, you'll find my blending videos. And I did Gamsol as one of those. Where did your love for colouring come from or begin? Oh, long story. No, it's not that long. Um, so I actually started, um, it was when I was on maternity leave with my first son. So he's six and a half now. And um, I was looking for a creative outlet and I didn't actually like colouring. I liked drawing and I liked just doodling and, and just sketching and stuff. And um, I hadn't actually done drawing for years, but I saw that colouring books were becoming really popular. That was way back in 2015. My years are so confusing now. 2015. And um, they were becoming really, really popular. And I saw them and I went, actually, that's very similar to the style of stuff that I can draw. And because at that time, I didn't know how to do anything in colour. I thought, well, I don't have to. Other people do the colouring. I just need to draw the black and white. That works for me. So I did and it went so well that I kind of went, well, maybe I should just try this for a little while. And so I made some more coloring books. So I kind of accidentally fell into coloring books. And it was actually only after people just started asking me for recommendations on colored pencils and how to color things that I thought I should probably learn how to actually color in <laughs> because now that I make coloring books, everybody's asking me for advice and I don't know what to tell them. So I bought, um, well, actually, no, I was given, I asked for it as a birthday gift, the set of Prismacolors and a few polychromos and decided to start learning to colour. Um, and I guess it just sort of, like, it was a little bit out of, I don't know, I kind of just accidentally fell into it from there. And then my passion just kind of grew. And I think because I've always been creative, I never really saw it as being a creative outlet until I sort of really just, did it more and more and then um i think my love for it really grew though only recently when i've started buying the better pencils and started really seeing the potential in what you can do with pencils um that's when it's really changed for me and really started to become quite passionate about using pencils and drawing and it i think for me the biggest turning point with using pencils was actually only a year ago when i drew when I first got the luminance pencils and I drew that picture of a pancake that you might have seen on my Instagram page and I went, oh wow, I can actually draw. <laughs> I haven't drawn since I was a kid, like other than, other than the colouring pages, like almost that cartoony style. I haven't drawn something like realistic since I was a kid and it was fun and I loved it and using coloured pencils. Um, and then I kind of just got hooked after that and now it's like... I want to do like a really big, like realistic thing with pencils. I, I really want to find some time to do that. And now I just want to find every excuse to get creative and try new things. And I want to get into paints and I want to do more stuff. And I just want to do more in this channel and, and do more creative things. And it's kind of just become contagious, I think. I even got Shane into it a little bit. He started a coloring page. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, we're just loving it now. Gina has asked, have you always been comfortable in front of the camera? Nope. <laughs> That's something that we've had to learn as well. Um, I actually made a point a few years ago of saying that, look, when I first started making colouring books, I wasn't even, there wasn't even a picture of me on my website. I, I hid. Um, both Shane and I have done a lot of like production and... Um, you know, graphic design and a lot of that stuff over the years, but we've always been behind the camera. And I remember when we first decided that we were going to even use my name as our brand name, and it was a bit embarrassing. It was like, this is weird. It's a bit 
all about me. And it's like, well, that's, you know, people want to get to know me as the artist. Okay, probably should do that. Yeah. And um, anyway, then it was a realization of I probably should put some photos of me on the website. Oh, that's a bit weird. Going and getting a photo shoot done. That's feels like it's all about me. That's a bit weird. Like it's, it's all a bit strange, but um, I think I've sort of realized over time that that's just something I have to get comfortable in. And so then, you know, before we sort of have jumped on YouTube, I've made a point in the past of doing some Facebook lives and things in my group. And I remember saying at the time, and I've always been very big on, um, especially over the past few years of learning to embrace failure. And so I made a point of jumping in my Facebook group and um, doing just some lives through there with the attitude of, well, one day video is going to be important. I don't know how or why, but I need to get all the failures out now and I need to get comfortable in front of a camera because one day it'll matter and I'd rather make the mistakes now when it doesn't matter as much. I'd rather make mistakes in front of a hundred people than later on when it matters in front of a much bigger crowd. And now here we are and I'm glad I did that <laughs> because now I find it much easier to be in front of a camera. And this being my second live stream, I am far more comfortable than what I would have been if we hadn't have done all those lives back then. <laughs> So it pays off to just, just have a go because if, in fact, if you want to see me not being comfortable in front of the camera, go back to the start of my YouTube channel and you will find the very first um, tutorial that we did that's still on my channel right back when we first decided, not like before I launched the YouTube channel, one of my old blog videos. And you'll see I was nervous. You'll see I was a bit awkward and it, it wasn't as natural. So it's... um definitely grown and changed and I think that's it for everyone like it, being natural on camera is maybe something that yeah you pick up but it still takes effort and it takes practice and it takes failure and I think confidence comes out of just being willing to fail and being willing to face that and just face it head on and just get the mistakes out and not worrying about what people think all right Shane's going to get the next question ready, but I just need to have a look and work out what I'm actually doing now because I'm kind of just colouring, but I need to stop and assess what's, what I need to do because <laughs> otherwise I'm just going around in circles at the moment. So I probably can build up a bit more colour here. It's close but almost finished, but probably a bit too light. So I need to darken this area. I have got a bit of an issue here with the white that I wasn't expecting where you can see a lot of the white lines this time. I think because it must just be that light colours are harder to hide the white than when I was doing the darker colours. Where's my other? When I was doing the darker colours with this, they disappeared really well. <clears throat> so it must just be that lighter colours are harder to hide um, because you can see the white lines. So you can see the white and the black lines. <laughs> so we'll just have to work out how to cover that up. Um, this is where I guess you've also got options of using things like your pan pastels or uh, pastel pencils. Maybe I should pull out my pastel pencils. I mean, they're not Prismacolors, so it kind of doesn't help you guys that are trying to colour along. But for the sake of trying something else, I haven't tried the pastel pencils at all yet. Maybe I'll have a look and see if that can at least work on this surface. Um, Around here, I'd really just need to bring in some colors to blend this in and just darken all this a bit and just bring these colors together at this point. Overall, the overall colors are kind of in the right areas. It just needs like another layer to finish it off. Um, so we can definitely get there. I just need a bit of water because I'm actually feeling a little bit dizzy, which is probably because I've been so focused on coloring that I haven't, I've got water here, it's okay. Um, I haven't stopped to have to hydrate for the last, what, three hours? <laughs> we are two hours and 10 minutes into our live stream. Oh, that's less than I thought, so that's actually not too much. Now, there are a lot of questions on there. I'm trying to get through as quick as possible. All so right, let's, let's do some if... quick, quick answer time. All right. Uh, first up, um, Kat has sent us a I'm not going to say it's a cat. It looks like a fox. A very cute super chat fox. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, I'll just hydrate here for a moment so you can get some questions out. <laughs> going back to have a look. Kate has asked if there is a company that you dream of being sponsored by. Hmm, I would say probably Faber-Castell or Derwent. 
maybe we should try and get Faber Castell to sponsor our end of year giveaway. That would be that would be epic. That'd what do you reckon, Shane? Good. That would be good. Um, <laughs> Anna has said a few times that your colouring colour catalogue is epic and that you need to mention it. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you just did. Um, well, maybe I, oh, I don't even have it in the top drawer here. Oh, it's downstairs. What a shame. <laughs> the colour catalogue. Yeah, that's um, that's what I often use if I'm colouring a page. I do have a few videos on it. It's also I used it in the last the last video to help with some of those gradient colours. It's a great colour tool to help with different colours. I don't use it with something like this because we're using the reference photo. But if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It's on my website. It's in a lot of my videos. Thank you for the plug. <laughs> Have you ever tried covering the whole page in Gamsol? In Gamsol? Oh, that would be interesting. You mean after drawing or before drawing? No, I haven't either way. What page do you think you would like to colour next? Mm, I think next I'm going to have to hit the poster book, I reckon. How do you time managing colouring with family life? <laughs> well, I, I often don't. I haven't actually coloured a page outside of what you guys have seen on my YouTube channel for months. That's being honest. It's, yep. Colouring is work right now, which is a little bit sad, but we'll get there once we get a bit more stability outside of um, lockdown craziness. I think maybe things will change. Alright, I'm feeling better. <clears throat> Alright, so what did I say we were going to do next? Oh, I was going to see. Here comes the Sarah trying something new because I've never used these. Oh, look at them, they're so pretty. I did say I was going to only use... um my colors today but I just want to have a look and see if this will work on the white let's have a look oh this smells amazing it smells like the wood with the Gamsol comment it was about blending the whole page with Gamsol uh, after coloring see I don't use um I don't use a lot of solvents to blend it's probably something that I'll consider more having like it I am so used to just blending without solvents. It's something I need to explore more and use more because it would save a lot of pencils and it would probably help me a lot with my techniques. It's something I'll keep exploring, but I've never done it for a whole page, no. Okay, so let me try and give you a full look. I'll just put this on Dumbo for a minute so that you guys can get a top down. Look at this. These are the Caran d'Ache pastel pencils. They're pretty flash. Maybe Caran d'Ache should sponsor me because <laughs> they're getting a nice little... A nice little spiel here. Um, so we've got all of these and all of these and all of these. So, yeah, Shane's pretty awesome. This was my birthday gift. And as you can see, they are unused. Um, what I might do, if we can put these here. Squishing my pencils. I just want to see... If I can find a colour, this looks like the right colour, what we get if we put this on top. Will it work? I know nothing about pastels at all. <laughs> hey, that would make a great video, me trying pastels for the first time. And then everyone that doesn't subscribe and that just comes from nowhere wanting to throw hate comments at me can all just comment about how a newbie shouldn't be wasting their money on Karen Dash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people are mean on the internet. Okay, this is not, doing nothing. Not everybody's mean. Rebecca. You guys aren't mean. You Rebecca guys are wonderful. Rebecca sent you a super chat for $5. Oh, thank you. Which is very nice. Okay, so these soft pastels are not going to work on the white. I think that's not really going to work. It's the right colour though. Look, that's like a perfect match for that colour that we picked out. Look at that. Oh, you can't see that. Let me do a little bit more of a swatch for you. Look at that. They would actually 
be a really good option for this guy just as a future idea if anyone wants to well, if anyone owns the Karen Dash and anyone wants to do this picture and wants to do a really nice sky, that particular colour makes a beautiful blood... I don't know. Anyway. So pastels made for good sky, but that's not going to work on the white. So I'm just going to put them away. Gavin's asked if you think you'll reach your 100,000 sub goal. I am confident that we will get there. I, I, have, I actually have some ideas and some plans. I can't totally, I can't tell you all our plans, but there might be some collaborations coming up that might help a little bit. That's probably all I can say. Um, no, we, we're confident that we'll get there. I think um, it, 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 I'm a bit nervous. I'll admit that I'm a bit nervous that we won't, but we've, we're pretty determined and- it has to be a challenge. That's it. It has, it has to be a challenge. And we've always been very ambitious people that set crazy goals as we did when we first set this goal, when we only had 15,000 subscribers. And a few people really didn't like me because of that, because they went almost a little bit like, how dare you? <laughs> um, so I got a little bit of hate for that. But you know what? We were going to set that goal for ourselves anyway. The difference being that I... You hear so many stories about people that um, made these goals and hit these goals. And, oh, you know, I said, and it's great to hear that later, but how much better to be on the journey with us and to hear that goal from us when we are there and to see us go through it and to kind of like be on the edge with us going, oh, are they going to make it? Are they not? <laughs> so, yes, that, that actually puts a lot of pressure on us because now it's like 10 times more nerve wracking if we don't make it. Or, you know, the closer we get to December, it's like, we put it out pretty publicly that we wanted to make it. But it's also exciting. I, I, I reckon we'll get there. I'm, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> so Anna has asked then how they can help you to get to 100k. Share the videos. <laughs> well, yeah, that's like the, the biggest thing you can do is, um, you know, every time you watch a video, every time you comment on a video, every time you like a video, it tells YouTube that someone likes these videos and YouTube goes, okay, cool. Maybe we'll try showing other people these videos. Um, and then YouTube shows them to more people and then more people find me. That's really what it comes down to is the more people that find me and then, then it's my job. Then it's my job to be likable, to produce content that's helpful to people. The, the best thing you can do is send more people to me and then it's up to me. <laughs> then it's on me. Um, if I'm not likable enough, if my content's not good enough, if I don't help people or if I produce videos that aren't any good, then that's my bad. Um, but really the goal is to just have YouTube send as many people to me as possible so that we have a chance. And so you can send YouTube those signals by liking, commenting and just watching videos, but you can also actually just share the videos yourself. Um, if you share them on other social networks, then instantly all of your friends are going to see them and that's directly sending people to my videos. So if you genuinely want to help, that is like, that is the best way and it is a huge help. It is amazing. Um, in the meantime, we are doing everything we can um, to actually keep sending, keep working on our content, keep doing everything. We put a lot of effort, if it's not obvious, <laughs> that into every one of the videos that we make, um, we put a lot of time into it. This is, this is a full-time job for the both of us, pretty much working on this YouTube channel. So we're committed. We are confident in making this work. And um, I'm excited. I'm really excited to actually just see where this goes, even beyond the 100,000. I'm just, yeah. I actually, when we started YouTube, didn't really expect it to be this fun and didn't expect you guys, like the YouTube community as a whole, to be so welcoming and just so amazing. And I'm really excited to see where this all goes. So. So another suggestion is to um, do what you've done in previous videos where you use the eyedropper tool in Procreate to work out which colours to use. Oh yeah, yeah. 
That's a good one. I did that if you're wanting a video about using the eyedropper tool in Procreate. The um, Stormtrooper video that I did, how to color white, I used that and you can see that close up. If you're wanting tips on how to pick the exact colors. All right, so what I'm gonna try and do now is finish up this section here um, and we'll just see what we can do with these white. What I might do, if I can't hide the white, then I might add more white and just try to build up so this is, where, this is where we have to kind of adapt. Even though it might not look like the original, if I can't hide the white, we get creative, we build it in. We add more white and we turn them into clouds. <laughs> so we'll just see what we can do. The first goal is to try and hide it a bit and just fix up this section and we'll just see if we can finish up this side. I'm finding it a little bit hard though because at the moment the white is reflecting my studio lights. So I'm starting to find it hard to see without getting in the way of everything you guys can see. So I'll be moving around a bit. <laughs> we are thinking of doing these streams about once a month as well. So if you are enjoying this and if you have any suggestions, maybe let me know in the comments because um, if this is something you'd enjoy doing more often, let me know if there's things that you think would be fun or like if, if this sort of thing is a bit too long, but you'd like to see other types of streams, maybe let us know. Um, this is obviously only our second one. So we're open to suggestions. If you just like this and like watching the coloring and, and doing this kind of thing, let us know that too. So. <clears throat> Now, just, yeah, just responding, responding to another comment on here. So the giveaway is still active for the 100K giveaway, yep. which is for the full polychromo set. There was another giveaway, which was the halfway one for 50K, and that, that's finished because we got there. So if you go on to Sarah's website, sarahnaclark.com, you can get to the giveaway for the, the full polychromos 100K goal. Thank you, Dreamy voiceover. You're welcome. Shane sounds like the Wizard of Oz with an echo on his voice. That might be because we've got two microphones. <laughs> yeah, he's probably coming through my microphone. Sorry. Did I just make all that way too dark? Oh, it's so hard to tell. And Victoria, we will be keeping the live stream um, online when we're done. So if you want to come back later afterwards, you can watch it again. You can either speed it up or slow it down. It's up to you. <laughs> slow it down. Is this too fast for someone? <laughs> just in case I'm coloring too fast, over these few hours, you can slow the video down. I know I do talk too fast sometimes in my videos, but that's why we have the little gear icon. You can slow it down. What inspired you to first start coloring? I think I kind of already answered that, didn't I? I, um, so. I kind of did it out of necessity. <laughs> it's that bad. <laughs> that so there's a rush of comments about my voice. So, oh, read them out. I want to hear. Tina, Shane, say as you wish. <laughs> as you wish. That is what's making his voice so dreamy. Shane hasn't seen that movie. That's um, the best. I love it. He has no idea what that's from. That's why it's funny. I might have to watch it this weekend. <gasps> um, you, he doesn't even know what he's agreeing to. This gets better. Um, Emma has asked if we can see Shane's face. There is a the video that's the 100K promo. You can see my voice for about one second in there. And I think one of the blending videos. I was in that. So you're not wanting to come on camera now? No, sorry. Not today. Um, 
You'll say more of Shane. It's okay. What if you did a concentrated Q and A where people send in their questions before the live stream, so it's streamlined, as you wish. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you guys have got Shane agreeing to watch this movie, and I'm not even going to tell him what it is until it's like on the TV, and he's going to massively regret it. It's great. I love it. Do you have a page where your subscribers can share their work? We have our Facebook group. Shane, tell them about the Facebook group. How about I go and get the link for it and I'll post it in the comments. Perfect. All right. I'm not really liking what's happening in this side here. I'm just trying to work out how to sort of save it. Hmm. Shane's just getting that link for you guys. Um, someone's looking for the giveaway on the website. Just look for the word win in the top banner of the website and you'll find it. Yeah, so go to sarahmayclark.com and right under the word Renee in the middle, it says in capital letters win. So click on there and you'll find that giveaway. So I'm just grabbing a bit more of a yellow because there's actually a bit more of a golden colour in here. So I've just grabbed the yellow that we used on Dumbo earlier to fill that in. Apparently I look like a young Paul McCartney. Shane, you're getting new fans. You're all going to embarrass him. <laughs> Shane likes hiding behind the camera. I've got to work out how to save this whole section now. So I do have this problem where the white is kind of um, coming through a lot more than I expected. So, I think I'm going to add some clouds, even though they're not in the design. Just to see what that gives us. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> A lot of my work involves hoping for the best. That's okay. Alright, so what I'm going to do is just kind of just build up clouds over the area. Kind of where it's already working in. Um, but this time we're going to be a bit more sort of generous with them than just on the line. So it actually looks like clouds. So we'll work off the lines I've already given us, since that's the whole problem, but make them a bit bigger. I don't know if you can see that. And they will, it will sort of dry as well. So it will mean it looks different to Thomas Kincaid's, but I sort of, at this point, don't think we have much of a choice because otherwise we've just got weird black and white lines sort of in the way. So that's our compromise. Okay, so we'll leave that to dry and then we'll just fix up some of these other little bits. I think that all is pretty similar. Watch this top section. What is your opinion on pineapples on pizza? Love it. Well, uh, actually, actually, it depends. 
Now, if we're talking true Italian pizza, then pineapples have no place. But Aussie pizza, pineapples are like a requirement. And I have a good friend who would be horrified at this because we argue about this. <laughs> she hates pineapple on pizza. <laughs> I feel like if you're talking about true Italian pizza, that you should say it in Italian. No. <laughs> that was Italian, by the way. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, true Italian pizza is much better without pineapple. Oh, I feel like I'm, I'm, I think because I'm starting to um, get a little bit tired, if I'm being honest, I'm getting a bit lazy. And so I'm just kind of scribbling and then going, what did I just do that for? <laughs> so I've just made a little bit of a mess of this section. Um, yeah, I just keep doing that. So let's just, just take my time with it again. Oh, I'm already taking my time. That's not the issue. It's just that I'm getting a bit, um, my brain's sort of gone a fuzz. This is probably where I should probably normally take a break. Um, but I do want to finish this sky for you guys. So we will keep going for fun. Lindell has said that not only does Shane sound like the Wizard of Oz, but Tom Gleason say hard from Hard Quiz, which is a show on ABC. Hard. How's that? Shane did do the Darth Vader voiceover for me in a previous uh, video. <laughs> that was Shane. We have um, Suman watching from India. Hi. Okay. Um, I feel that like we're always there in this bit, but the the grey is too grey, so I need to. What do I need to do to lighten that up? I need to maybe bring in. I don't know what colour I'm missing here. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because this is this is where the the colours are confusing because it's like a yellow cast over the whole thing. But I don't know if it's. Well, maybe that's what it is. It's almost like this yellow, um, I guess the yellow light over the whole thing that's making the grey not as grey as what I've got. So maybe I just need yellow to go over it all. Linda is from Taiwan and loves your videos. Thank you. That doesn't feel quite right. This is where the um, the the perfectionist in me is kicking in now because I, I just I'm actually not happy with this bit. Um, on video, it probably doesn't look that different. Close up, it looks quite different, and I'm just like I just want to keep fiddling, but I also don't want to spend too long. So what I might do is move on, and I can come back and fiddle with it later. We're going to be here for a while. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I feel. I feel like there was a lot of time to spend on a background to leave it at this point when I'm not happy with it. <sighs> okay, I'll keep working on the rest of the background. I feel like I can do better here and I'm not done with it, but I'm not happy with it. Um, but I also just don't want to keep you guys here for like four more hours if I just can't let go of a little area that's almost done. So I'm going to work on some of the other spots in the sky so that we can get this sky like 90% done. This is why I, I don't usually do my videos real time. <laughs> we cut a lot out of our short 15 minute videos.
Shane, you know what I just realised? What's that? We still didn't pull down that paper. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think you can see it. Oh, okay. There's still paper all over our wall. Yeah, you can a little bit. That was supposed to be this week's video. And it's been delayed. <clears throat> what is your favourite colouring in book? I haven't really coloured in that many books except for my own, so it's kind of hard to say. Suggestion that maybe you need a bit of a violet under the yellow? Yeah, that might work. Or that maybe you can move on to a different part of the page and come back to it with fresh eyes. Yeah, I think that's probably what I need to do with that bit. So I'm going to just do this rest of this sky and then um, then probably come back and that just, yeah. I think that is a good idea because I'm starting to just have been looking at that bit of the sky for so long that it's just not clear anymore. These pictures are actually quite different to what I would normally do because I tend to lean so much to like really, really bright colours and these are so muted. I think that's actually one of the reasons why I find them fascinating because they are colours that I don't traditionally use and the end results, they sort of work against my natural instinct a bit. So it's actually quite challenging for me, but in a fun way. Um, I know with Ariel it was very much like that. Sorry to flip back to it constantly, but it's just easier to talk to it, talk about it. Like I really liked how this turned out because if I was to approach this without the reference, I would not have thought to use these colours in the in the uh, water at all. And um, I just like they're just colours that I wouldn't have put together. I would not have thought to use this combination for the sky and stuff like that. And I love the warm colouring in this and just the different shadows and things like that. So for me, I find that these, these pictures, because his style is so different to mine, actually really stretch me to try different colors. Um, and because for me, color just fascinates me. So the fact that his stuff is just so colorful in that unique way, that's one of the things I actually, so I actually do love this book, despite the paper being quite difficult to work with. I will be interested to see how the poster book compares. Um, I have the post book here, let me show you. This is the poster book. So I am gonna have a go at this in a future video. And um, the, the, the one downside with the poster book is the pictures are tiny. <laughs> um, they're much smaller because rather than being like the big part of the picture, it's the same, hang on, let me find, I'm trying to work out how to explain this. They are the same paintings, but rather than being the same painting on a small section, it's on a much bigger... Hang on. Let me find an example. So they still have the reference images in the back of this one, rather than side by side. So you've still got it. There's the little mermaid at the start. Hang on. So that little mermaid picture that I did is actually in here as well. But it's the whole picture. Here it is. So that same picture. You've got this size. And you'd think the poster book would be easier because it's bigger. But look at the size of Ariel and Eric. They're tiny. <laughs> I thought this was hard to colour because they're so tiny and on here they're like even smaller again. So there's a part of me that's like, oh, this is going to be easier because the paper's a bit better. It's actually got a bit of tooth to this paper. 
And the other part of me is actually really scared because, and look at this one, like these, this is the first one that I did. Look at the size of these characters on here compared to here. The difference is crazy. So there's a part of me that's excited to try this book because it's better paper, they're bigger. It is much nicer paper by the feel of it. The other part of me is terrified because those pictures are so small. I am not sure how on earth I'm going to get in those spaces at all with any pencils. So we'll see how we go with that one. It's going to be fun. I think I'm almost ready to just sort of leave the background as is and move on because I think like how let, let me know what you guys think if you're sort of happy that you've seen enough of the background and how I've chosen the colors obviously the white hasn't quite worked out how I would have hoped it would um I, I ooh, that's why I, that's the part that's that's tearing me up as to moving on and leaving it as is because I don't like leaving you guessing how you would fix it. So maybe let me know if you would like me to keep working on this or whether you want me to move on because I can come back and fix this up later and show you a final photo, but I can't obviously show you the process <laughs> if, I, if I move on. So let me know. There's a suggestion on here that you could um, do a live stream where you copy the colouring page onto some better colour, better quality paper. Yeah, I think we could do that maybe for a, a different... I sort of said earlier, I'm not really sure how, um, how we're protected with copyright for that, so I'll look into it. It would definitely give us a lot more flexibility with this and what we can do, so. Jen has said that she would rather see you fix it so they know what they can do if they have the same problem and thinks that it looks amazing. Thank you. And Katie has said to put more of the yellow colour between the cracks of the blue in the sky. In the cracks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is where I sort of wonder, like, do we just get like the paint pen? Like I've got this color that's not really the right color, but if we sort of faint, like faintly use it and blotch it over this area, would it kind of work into that a bit? Because the problem with the pencils is that we have so much of this white that's just not going away with these lighter colors. I can't believe that no matter what method I use, the sky always has this problem with the black lines. It's actually really annoying. I just can't seem to escape this problem of these black lines, no matter what method I use on this particular paper. <clears throat> Although in saying that, I have not tried the gesso yet on a whole page. That's the one thing that I started using it once on that test page and then decided against it because it added so much tooth that I was worried it was going to be quite different. And I wasn't sure if I bought the right gesso. So that's the one thing that I... <laughs> Not gesso, we've cleared that up. <laughs> um, it's the one thing that I haven't tried. So we could try that. I think that probably just needs a whole video on its own <laughs> using the gesso. Um, I wonder if that would be the solution here.
I just am not really happy with leaving these black lines. I'm just trying to think what the best way would be to genuinely resolve this. I just want to get all the colours around them to be what I'm happy with first though. The good thing about using that circular motion around here is that being clouds, everything's quite circular as well. So you really want to avoid using straight lines in a sky in any situation. Rounded motion will always look more like clouds. Even in the paint, it's kind of rounded. So that's something to remember with your pencils is try to draw in circles. <laughs> Which feels weird, I have to admit, it feels weird when you first do it. Once you start building the skill though, it actually gets easier and you'll notice it starts to get easier to do it lighter. It's really throwing me off, this pick pen not working today. Have you ever tried to colour in a Bob Ross colouring book? No, I haven't actually. Katie said, maybe blend a bit more between the blue and the yellow and you should be good, don't overthink it. The problem is that I can't because it's actually um, what you're not seeing there is that yellow is actually white. That's the white line that I'm that's caused by the pit pen. That's actually not yellow. Um, so you can't probably because I'm looking at the screen and I can see what I think you can see. That's a, if you're talking about this bit here. Um, that's actually not yellow. That's actually the white line that I'm trying to get rid of. And that's the problem. <laughs> Herein lies the problem. I wonder, let's just try for a little bit, a little section using this sort of muted yellow paint pen. Let me just test the color because it is still a bit bright. I use this color as a part of doing Ariel's glow because it wasn't quite as bright as the bright yellow. Um, let's just try over this side first. If we did that on some of it and then just kind of blotted it out, is that too intense? It might just help to just make the whites not white. It might bring the colour down a bit, you know. Maybe we should have just not, <laughs> maybe we should have gone the other way on that pole and, and not done that. It was, it was so close to 50-50. Problem is it is quite yellow. Probably too yellow for the other side, huh? Um, just thinking of other options. What else have I got? I've got... Okay, I'm gonna try a really sharp pencil. See if, if having it sharper will help us to just... gesso is an option so the next question is where did I put it <laughs> I don't even know where I put it it's around here somewhere the other thing I have is pan pastels or soft pastels which again I actually don't really know how to use but These were my mum's old soft pastels that I recently found. Where does that all lay down? I'm gonna try these for a sec. Uh, got a spongy thing here. This will do something, surely. So these are Mungyo, is that how you say it? I hear a lot of people talk about these and then I found them in my mum's old art supplies and I thought, well, no one else in our family needs these so I will see if I can put them to use because this is a brand that I know a lot of people talk about. 
I'm not sure if these age over time because they're quite old, but they've barely been used. So this seems to be a very similar color to what we've been sort of talking about using. Let's see if that can help. I just lay down a lot of it. I'm gonna use my finger, I've got a sponge right here. I don't know if it's gonna to attach to this though, that's the problem. And that is gonna be a problem if it's not going to like stick down. It's covering it, I just don't know if it's going to actually like stay on the surface. Um, anyone in the comments know how to use pastels that can give me a tip on getting it to actually stay? <laughs> I mean, I could use a fixative, but then it's game over for everything else, I think. Hmm. What do we think, guys? I don't have enough colours to like work a blue in as well. <laughs> Someone suggested hairspray. We're not doing that. <laughs> We've done that before. That's how we ruined the first page. Um, I feel like this could be a... Like, should we just leave the background? What do we think? And come back to it. I can problem solve and I can let you guys know like in, on, in my Facebook group or something. Um... Oh, oh, Katie, I was saying hairspray. Are you saying hairspray to fix the pastel? See, I did hairspray on the first page, but I thought it would help me to. Yeah, no, okay, that makes sense to fix the pastels. <laughs> Context helps. It's what ruined my first page. That's why I was. That's why I was like, no, it's a bad idea. But context. <laughs> um. All right. I think we might even just have to leave it like that for now. It actually doesn't look that different. I think like. From a distance, I think we're pretty close. I think close up and I'll take some photos of this later, I guess. You can see that the white lines are still there and I'm not totally happy with them. So I might have a bit more of a go at getting rid of these later. Um, I think for now, I'd probably like to move on because um, otherwise I feel like I'm just gonna spend a lot of time trying to fix this background further. I'm just sorry, I'm just looking at the comments. So, what do we think? Should we move on? What do we want to do next? <laughs> what do you think, Shane? I think we should move on to something else. Otherwise, we're going to be here all, all day. Yep. What would you guys like to see me colour next? I think we probably have time for one more thing before we probably need to let you all go or we're going to be here forever because I think we're starting to realise that this is, is not a quick page. <laughs> we've made some good progress though. Um, sort of. Dumbo's page is going to be a long, a long page, I think. Um, we could do, I mean, the zebras are pretty simple, but they do have a bit of a glow to them. The ground, the ground could be a fun one because that's actually got a bit of a challenge to it, but there's actually not a lot of guides already. So that could be a fun one for me to show you a bit of interesting shading because there's a lot of texture here. Um, so that could be interesting. The same with the train. There's a lot of different textures in the train. So maybe, um, I don't know if you want to put a pole up quickly, train or ground, um, or zebras. There's not a whole lot to color with the zebras. I, I personally think that the ground or the train would be more interesting, but that's obviously my opinion. <laughs> there is more to the background as well. Um, but that's not going to be a whole lot different from what we've just done. So we've got our options up there. 
So let's have a vote for that. You guys have a vote. I'm going to have a quick sip of water again. Shane, do you want to read me out some other comments? Someone has suggested that they want to see Shane and what he looks like. If you want to see what Shane looks like, you'll need to do heaps of super chats. <laughs> Shane, what's your what's your price, Shane? Oh, I'm not going to give a price on it. <laughs> um, well, there is actually a way to see Shane if you head to um, our other website. If you track it down. I'll have to figure that out. There's a few suggestions on things for you to colour next. So a few people have mentioned about finishing the elephant, but I feel like it'd be good to do something else. I can I can do the top of that elephant because it's got green while you get the votes going. Yeah. All right? You do that. I'll do the elephant's little green thing while you do that. So far, most people want the train to go next. Cool. So keep... Keep getting those votes in. I'm just going to see. I seem to have lost my green swatches because these are halves and I reckon there's more greens than what I can see. So I'm just going to go by eye. That's pretty close. That green's really short. I think it's one that breaks. So I need a green and I need a light green and like a dark. There it is. Scotty, the answer to the first part of your question is yes, Aussie. The second part, no. What was the question? Is he an Aussie spunk? <laughs> yes. Yes. Alright, so elephant, I've got my three greens. I'll just write these on here for everyone. And Anne has done a ten dollar super chat. Thank you very much. Thank Anne, you. For that. Was that to see Shane or? Didn't mention it in that, so no. <laughs> Shane probably wants a haircut after being in lockdown for so long before he sees anyone. There's a lot of things that I need before being seen in public. Alright, so I'm just going to quickly finish this elephant's little decorative thing on their head here. I've got my middle green, which is sort of the main colour. It's not a perfect match, but that's okay. Well, that's actually the elephant's ear. Whoops, my bad. Should have coloured that earlier. And then we've got a shadow green, which isn't really needed all that much, but there's a little bit of a shadow. 53% of people want the train next. Okay, we'll do the train. Good thing is this little bit here is quite quick. It's just doing a touch there. Tiny little details, and then we have a green along the edge where the light hits. Totally went out of the lines, but it doesn't really matter because it's a glow, so. Is there a sharpener that you recommend? Now, you did mention earlier you're going to do a video about that when they arrive. Yeah. Um, currently, I think if you're looking, probably my two favourites is the Dahl 133 and the M&R sharpener, which is the one I'm using today, um, which are both crank sharpeners. And um, if you're wanting a non-crank sharpener, I really like the T-Gull, which is a nice little one. Um, but I do have a lot of other ones because they all serve different purposes. So I am going to do a whole video because there's like if you're wanting sharper points for certain pencils and stuff like that. Um, but I'm just waiting on a few more that have been lost in the mail multiple times from different sellers. I think that says a little bit more about Australia's postage system right now than about the sellers. So we're, we're ready to do the video. We're just waiting on four more sharp no actually we ended up only just getting two of them because the other two were just not arriving so two more sharpness and then we can go with the video I think we're okay going with the, train. the train okay so we've got some grays we'll do this bit of our train first 
Our greys do look pretty similar to our elephant, so I'm just going to take a guess that that's what we're going to work with. So let's just make that assumption. Although we did have the issue that the, the elephant ended up being a lot more brown than we expected. So let's just actually have a look at these. I wonder if there's a bit more of a blue gray available. Hang on, that's a black. Didn't need oh, we'll get that out. This actually does have a lot darker areas than some of the others, so um is there a more blue gray? 1065, that's what we have, isn't it? So that 1065, look how much that has changed. Oh, wow. Here I have been thinking that that's my blue gray. Look how much that has changed now. Can you guys see that? It's not it's not blue at all. Oh, that's oh, Okay, that's my bad. That's 1056. That's not 1065. <laughs> Ignore everything I just said. Okay, that has not changed. Oh, that's just me. Okay, let's let's do that again. <laughs> 1065 is over here. I was about to say, no wonder my... There we go, that, that looks a bit better. Okay. How embarrassing. <laughs> How embarrassing. Okay, so 1065. I think that's going to be a better fit for what we're actually doing here. I think that's a better option and we'll use 1063 which is not that one 1063 Scott we've done a super chat as well thanks for your content Sarah your voice is relaxing oh thank you <laughs> I'm sure not everyone someone else told me my voice was like really annoying so I'm glad that that's not the yeah they said that was cringeworthy so I'm glad that's not the general consensus <laughs> Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm looking for 10. I've got 1065, 1063, 1067. I think they're my three because they're the same kind of grey. They're, they're all cool greys. So that's what we're going with. So I've got 1065 and 1067. Now I need 1063. You know what I really need is like a full time assistant just to sort my pencils when I'm done. <laughs> that's what we need. <laughs> It's not here. Pretty sure I've sorted your pencils a few times, but the next time you use them, they just end up <laughs> dumped in a pile again. <laughs> yeah. The sorting helps though, at least once. Oh, there's 1063. Look, it's there. Um, okay, so I've got my three greys, and then I need a red. A few people have said they love your accent and Crystal oh. has said cringeworthy is not a word I use to describe anything about you to be honest. Oh thank you. I know I know that that was just someone who um, just obviously had their own things to sort out. It's fine. <laughs> we laugh about those kind of comments. We don't take them to heart. It's okay. Okay, so we're going to go for 9.22. For our red, but also I think um, so. The reds are a bit confusing because we've got like a dark red, but there's the light cast. So the yellow light is mixing with the red, making it a bit of an orange. So the 922 is kind of an orangey red, but I'm not really sure it's quite the right red. So I want to have some backups. So I'm kind of leaning towards the 118, but that's my dreaded little 118 that I know is going to break. So I don't really want to use it. <laughs> I avoid that color. As much as I can. Oh, but it looks like the right colour in this instance. Maybe we can adjust the colour to instead be more like 921. I'm doing that. Avoid that colour because I know it's going to break and it's going to frustrate me. So I just avoid it. But for the first time ever, I've bought a second set of Prismacolors and they are coming. So I'll finally have a 118. <laughs> I should have just bought one open stock ages ago, but... That feels like more effort, so it's easier just to pick a near a pencil near it. Okay, um, I just want a slightly darker red as well. Mm. 
is it Shyla? Am I saying that right? Shyla? Thank you for the super chat. Waiting for your beautiful planners. We're, they are, we have almost got them. The, the physical planner, the coil bound planner, that this one, this planner, oh, here it is. These are almost finished production. They're supposed to be finished this week. So I am waiting for the manufacturer to give me the heads up and then they're going to be sent my way. So half are coming to me. <laughs> they're gonna fill our, our garage and the other half are going to America. And then they will be immediately sent out to everyone who's ordered them. So hopefully you guys get them very soon. And then the printable and digital ones were supposed to be finished at the end of this month, but I have got them done. I'm just um, trying to get together the digital sticker book so that I can send it out at the same time. So I do hope to have those out in the next week or so as well, which is earlier than planned, but I would like to get that out to you as soon as possible so that everyone can start using them. So I do hope to have everything to you soon. And I know everyone's really excited. We've had a lot of sales this year and it's been really exciting for us as well. And I'm really excited to get them out to everyone. So oh, thank you to everyone. I've just popped a, a link to that planner in the chat. And it's also pronounced Shyla, who's bought both planners and some stickers and is very excited. Awesome, thank you Shyla. And Rebecca also said <coughs> that she thought that I was your assistant, which Sort of. <laughs> well, I quit my job to. <laughs> he did. He did quit his job to help me. So, kind of is my full time assistant. Well, he's you no, know, but he's also the full time co director and production manager. So, not really assistant is the it's way an understatement. <laughs> I'm her assistant. <clears throat> Okay, so I've got my red and I've got my grey. Let's just start there. Yeah? And then we can bring in some other colours. I can already see that we're going to need a yellow. Let's just bring over this yellow because that's the warm that we've been using everywhere else. So let's just do, write that one in. This is a good starting point at least. Just need a bit more of this. Katie really wants you to finish the yellow. <laughs> All I've got left is his ear, her ear. <laughs> and the other one. Oh, the other elephant. Okay, we'll try. Let's see, how we go. Okay, we're going to do the train first. So, again, I'm just trying to work out where the darkest areas are first because I find that's easier to then work out sort of, this is not sharp enough, um, where everything is. I'm finding that the pencils need to be sharper because there's no tooth in this paper and because the stuff here is so tiny that if the pencils aren't sharp, I just can't do the detail. So it is using up a bit more of my pencils because I'm having to sharpen them more. But I also find they're just nicer to use when they're sharper. So that's just kind of the cost of it, I guess. Shyla has also said she just realised she never finished the video where you used white ink on the lines of the colouring book. Was it worth your time? The white ink? <laughs> the one that wrote, that had fail written across the thumbnail? A little bit of a hint in the title there as to how that one went. <laughs> yeah, not, not very well. It finished okay, but I was disappointed. I'm still glad I gave it a go, but it didn't turn out how I wanted. Now the good thing here is it actually shows you um, drawing stuff like this is a really good to practice drawing shiny stuff because these shadows and everything, if you copy the shadows in the exact same spots, this is actually going to end up looking shiny. Um, I don't know if that made sense, but because they've got dark and then light gray and then these white highlights, that's exactly how you draw a shiny object is just different grays and whites. So I do have a video about like how to draw gold that I talk about that a little bit. But that's pretty much what is happening here, is it's just a combination of different greys and just drawing them in different patterns and it'll end up looking shiny when we're done.
Shane's voice sounds like the very helpful narrator who in a lot of shows with the echo. Can we share other colouring pages in your group or just stuff that you have drawn? No, you can share from any artist, that's fine. And Tina has said that your gold colouring tutorial was awesome. Thank you. I'm glad you found it helpful. Unfortunately, videos like that don't do as well on YouTube as videos of me failing. <laughs> so videos like my gold tutorial don't have many views because people just like to watch people mess up. So um, they're the kind of ones that you guys need to share. If you find it helpful, leave comments on stuff like that. Tell YouTube that, hey, we like this stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Scotty, for the super chat. I'll let Sarah read the comment on that one. I found Shane. He's a hunk. He has a single twin. No, he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't have a single twin. Now I'm a bit worried about what he's found. I'm one of a kind. If you've just done a search for Shane Clark, Clark's a very, very common last name, so I wouldn't get your hopes up on that. <laughs> wow. That kind of hurts a little bit. What? No, I'm not talking about you not being a hung. I'm talking about like thinking that they've found you because they found Shane Clark. Oh, okay. That's what I was talking about. Fair enough. We're getting the hopes up on having one of you for themselves. I'm sorry, but that's not happening. <laughs> Sarah, I've been kind of not doing art as often because maybe it's a little overwhelming on what to even draw and colour. I think you, you did a video about that recently. Yeah, I think if you're feeling overwhelmed, I think the thing is you've just got to start with something. So um, finding tutorials online and just copying them or just finding something small. So, I mean, I find coloring books are actually a really good way to, to just be that something small sometimes because they are low pressure. The lines are already done for you. So it's a little bit easier to pick something up. Probably not a coloring book like this. But just a simple coloring book, maybe something with patterns, for example. Um, finding that's why, like things like the color catalog are good because you don't even have to pick your colors. You just look and pick a color palette and start. I think the best way to break creative block is to just start creating. But you just have to start somewhere small because trying to jump, it, it's kind of like trying to run a marathon after sitting on a couch all week, like we've been in lockdown. It's not going to happen. You have to start small. You start with a walk around the block or you start, you know, you just take small baby steps. So if you're finding you're in a bit of a creative rut, you're not going to be able to go create a masterpiece straight away. And if you think that's what you're going to do, you're creating an immense amount of pressure on yourself and it's just going to make that creative block worse. Instead, you just need to pick something small, some small activity, even if it's just challenge yourself to draw 20 flowers, just draw 20 flowers. And then that's something. And if you just do something small like that each day or even just once a week, sometimes each day is too much pressure. Um, just do something small like that every once in a while and that will start building those creative muscles again so that when you are ready, you just actually find that that creative block kind of breaks itself through those little activities. That's what I recommend anyway. Baby steps. Katie has said that mandala colouring books are good when I have artist block. Hmm. Just think of them as exercises. So I've just actually realised that I've kind of lost all my shadows because my mid-tones 
being the middle greys. I blend a bit too much, so I'm just bringing back some of the darker shadows to just bring a bit more contrast in. And then for these little white bits, I'm going to bring in the white paint pen to do those. Um, I've also got on the front bit here, there's actually a warm colour. So I might actually I might do that now to bring in that. Is it? It's probably more of a yellow though than this. So I need a lighter colour. Oops. Yeah, it's more like this one. And then we're almost done with this part of the train at least. Under, the bit under here is a bit confusing because it doesn't really match the picture so it's kind of just going to have to wing it and just make it up I think Another question earlier, would you ever think about using markers in a book like that? I did actually try markers when I first did it but I think markers would be very hard to replicate this because this has just got so many different colours and so much fine detail it's just too small. That's why I think um, normal, my first attempt at this, I did a marker base and then tried with the pencils and I just found that the marker base became irrelevant because the pencils, you just had to do so much fiddly stuff anyway. So I prefer just using pencils in a book like this. Most books I would prefer to do markers and pencils together. Um, it's only because this has that real painted look of, this is just easier, I think. Marie has asked if you'll be doing weekly live streams. No. <laughs> no, unfortunately, we're, we're doing um, our weekly normal videos, but doing a weekly live stream as well would just be way too much work. <laughs> we already kind of stretch ourselves a bit thin getting our weekly video out and the live stream, like this is a lot of extra hours on top of that. So this is, we're probably going to try and do a live stream once a month if we can. Um, and we'll try and do something a bit different each time. So last time we did a colouring page in preparation for a review I was doing later in the week. This time we're doing this with a bit more of a detailed colouring page. And next time we might do something completely different. So if you'd like to sort of, you know, make any suggestions, you're welcome to. Or any specific things you'd like to see in live streams. Things that you would like to see in the real time in more detail. Then yeah, let us know because... Um, even let us know in the Facebook group if you don't get a chance to comment here because that's the kind of thing we really want to give you guys a chance to have more time in these streams to talk, to get feedback um, and that's what these streams are supposed to be. So we are open to mixing them up. We don't sort of have a set format and we're happy to sort of make them work for what you guys want but not every week. So speaking of videos, we have decided that this Friday we're probably going to take a week off. Um, we actually haven't skipped a video, I think, in a year. Um, we haven't had any time as a family to take a holiday other than we did take, I think, a week off for Christmas. And with all the lockdowns and the quarantines and school being cancelled and restarted and everything it's been an insane time for our family so we've been talking about it and so we're probably this week going to take a break from the video so that we can actually take some time as family and have a little bit of a break we thought this week's good because we're doing this live stream anyway so we might pop up maybe some shorts or something um just a short video that you guys can still enjoy that we'll try and schedule later in the week so you've got something but this week we think we might take Friday off and then that way next week we can have a video up instead um, just to give ourselves a, a bit of a break. I think we haven't had a break for a long time and sometimes you just got to. It takes a lot of work, like we said, to create these videos and I think sometimes we've just got to know our limits and it's healthy to do that. So 
please don't panic when you don't hear from me on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> it's just us giving ourselves a healthy balance of personal time with our family. <laughs> Katie has asked, what's on your Christmas wish list? Hmm. I don't know. I haven't even thought about that. Probably pencils. <laughs> our um, our six-year-old said to me the other day, Mummy... Oh, because he heard, he heard the song that we sang, the, um, <clears throat> the song that we made up about wanting all the pencils and Shane at the end saying no. And he heard that and he goes, Mummy, I know you want all the pencils. <laughs> and then he says at the end, and Mummy, you should have all the pencils that you want <laughs> or something along those lines. It was so cute. Um, it's his way of. So I'm just trying to find a, there's a bit of a teal colour in here. So I'm just trying to find what I can use for that. I'm not even going back to my swatch. I'm just picking some pencils, finding one. That colour's kind of, it's like a teal grey. So I might use this. So he's got his wish list set up for Christmas already, as you do when you're six. He definitely thinks I want more pencils. So that is almost all of the um, the carriage and stuff. I might just darken up this side and then we'll just add some little highlights and then we'll get onto the red. So a lot of it, once I pick my base colours, is just going back and forth between colours and fiddling and just kind of making it up, but just experimenting. And I look back at the picture a lot and just keep looking and tweaking and just keep going back and forth until it looks right, which does make it very hard for me to do like a colour along um, because I am figuring it out as I go, which would make it very hard to colour along with me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but that's just my process and that's why in a lot of my tutorials I don't always provide the color numbers because I'd rather teach you the method that I use to do this than try to have you just copy me doing it um, because then you can actually learn to color like a color rather than just trying to copy my colors if that makes sense. I think it's more useful to learn the technique rather than to just copy the colors. So we've now got, oh now I do want to add those little white spots which I'm actually just using the paint pen because I found the other day the gel pens didn't work on this paper as well. So the paint pen always works, it seems. So we're just doing a few little white spots. There's some white spots on the front too. Are they eyes? I'm not really sure. They look like eyes. Some spots up here. And that's most of that. Now the carriage actually has some yellow. So I've also got a yellow paint pen. I'm not sure if it's the right yellow. Yeah, that's, oh. I found this with the other picture. His yellow is actually quite a bright yellow. Makes it very hard to copy, but we've got one that's fairly close. So we'll use that. Now I can't get the lid off. <laughs> we have a comment here from, I think it's Nikisha. Bye everyone, it's 11.23 and I have to work in the morning. Morning, Sarah and Shane, you're both doing an awesome job. Everyone enjoy the rest of the stream. Stay safe and enjoy life. Thank you. Have a good sleep. 
we will finish up soon because it's now 1.30 here and we will need to go get ourselves some lunch and soonish pick up our son from school as well because school is back on for him at the moment. He says to me today, Mummy, I don't like real school. <laughs> No, you love it. <laughs> Please go back to school. <laughs> We've been doing online school for oh, a while. Online school? No, we want real school. All it took to convince him was, but you get to talk to your teacher about Star Wars because he's into Star Wars at the moment. He's never seen Star Wars, mind you. He's too young for that. But he's obsessed because he plays Star Wars Lego. And he was like, oh, okay. Yes, I like school now. <laughs> that was enough. That's all we needed. He's like, oh, does my teacher know Star Wars? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> he will by the end of today. All right, I think we're happy with that part of the train. Paint pens are always very useful. So I definitely recommend getting a set of um, just thin paint pens. I actually mostly, I <clears throat> these ones are, uh, I've got a mix of them here today, just based on what colours I had behind me. I've got a Life of Colour one and I've got Artistro. These were both given to me by these different brands. Um, I actually normally use Posca, which I have around here somewhere. These were just handy at the time, so that's why I've got them. Um, but there are all different options. Those are a bit more affordable than Posca, so that's a good option if you're wanting something cheaper but they all work. They all work really well. Now let's move on to our red. Let's have a look. So I'm actually just going to do a light, very light layer of this sort of base red over everything. And then we'll go back and do the shadows. Just to speed it up a bit. Have you ever tried using Procreate or other iPad drawing tools? Do you like it as much as real colouring pages? I don't like it as much as real because I love the feeling of pencils in my hand, but I do like Procreate. I would like to use it more. Um, I don't know Procreate well enough because I haven't used it enough, but the few times I've used it, it's been really fun. I haven't really used anything else, actually. I've just seen so many people do so much with Procreate and I've barely touched the surface on it that... It's the only one I've tried, um, but I would love to play around with that more and get to know it a lot more and get into digital drawings and stuff a lot more because I've seen some amazing artwork with Procreate. grays in this painting like even just around here and you've got to remember this original painting would have been so much bigger so it would have been a lot easier to get these grays in but there's just around the window sill here and just in the lines there's so much gray so I might try and bring some of that gray in um, I guess the other thing is we've got the black lines here so we don't need to go too crazy because the black lines kind of do some of that for us Cindy has asked how you achieve the glow around the characters on the pages. Um, pretty much with pencils and then I was using these on, so with Arial, which if you watch the video, we did show it in a little bit of detail. I whited out those lines right at the start and then to finish it off, I actually used these two colours um, to try and do it. Like you, you pretty much, yeah, I, I used these on top at the end and then blended them in. If you didn't have to do the whole whiting out, you could probably do it with pencils and even just do the glow first 
and kind of blend it out and then do another bit of the glow. Like it's, it's kind of just layering between the background and the glow. The thing with any glow and anything else is you've just got to try and look at that part of the picture as like, almost like, I'm just trying to think how to explain it. Um, you need to try and look at every part of the picture as its own little piece of a jigsaw puzzle rather than looking at it as a glow. Don't look at it as a light source. Look at it as, okay, this little part of the picture is yellow and the yellow stops here and the blue starts here and they blend together. The more that you can learn to see each part of the picture, you can even actually get like a piece of paper, cut a hole in it and just put it on that bit of the picture and then just try to copy exactly what you see. The more you can learn to see the colors and shapes in those little bits, rather than trying to look at the whole picture, the easier you'll find it. So like even with the, the water like this, if you're trying to recreate water, you'll find it really hard. Whereas if you're looking at this and saying, how do I recreate that white dot? And you're looking at it as a white dot, that's a lot easier than trying to recreate a water splash. So it's about trying to not see the object and just see the color and the shape. And that takes practice, but you will get there. It'll be the same with this smoke. It's about looking at, okay, well, what's that made up of? In this case, it is a white object, but you could see that the white object could be laid on top of the objects behind it. So we could actually do that with the pit pen dabbed on top like paint um, instead of trying to color it into the background. I can't do that until we do that background. So it's probably not something I'll have time to show you today, but that will be the same method that I used when I did the tail here where I added those splashes on top afterwards using that white paint pen by just dabbing that on top and it created that same kind of smoky look. So it's just about trying to learn to see the colors and shapes instead of looking at the big picture, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. So in fact, I love jigsaw puzzles. So maybe that's why I find it easier. I don't know. <laughs> it just takes practice, I think. Marissa has asked, with so many colours to choose from, do you use swatches to see which fits the picture the most? Yep, I've got them here. <laughs> so I'm guessing you sort of tuned in halfway into this because we were using them at the start, although I've sort of stopped using them about halfway in. So um, it does depend on the picture. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. But I usually like to have swatches because it's quicker than going through hundreds of pencils. It depends, sometimes I just grab. I usually start with them and then as I'm going, the colors get more familiar and I start to just grab pencils. So, a bit of both. I'm just going to use the yellow paint pen again, just to help with the light on the top of this. This one's lid is stuck today. Oh, that's the second time I haven't been able to get that off. There we go. Just to really get that yellow glow on the top. I'm down the front. Marie has asked, what's your favorite colored pencils? I have a few. I really like the Prismacolors that I'm using now. Um, and I really like the Polychromos, the Faber-Castell Polychromos. And I really like Caran d'Ache Luminance. Um, they would be my top three. I think if I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be the Caran d'Ache Luminance. But yet I use the Prismacolors the most. So part of that is because I have a much bigger set of um, Prismacolors than the Luminance. Um, and the Prismacolors seem to be a little bit more forgiving on cheaper paper or well, different paper. I think the Luminance 
um, seem to perform much better when you have the good paper. So I use a mix between those three. Well, I don't actually use polychromos that often, but the few that I have, I really like. <laughs> They're on my wish list. But I need your help to get them because they are on my wish list in that we're buying them when we reach 100,000 subscribers. So we are running a giveaway for that, which I think Shane's already linked to that, but he'll pop another link in. Um, that if you help us get to 100,000, I will get a set, but someone else will get a set as well. So we have a little giveaway that explains how that all works and we're aiming to get there by the end of the year. And if we get there, I'll get my set of polychromos, so I'm excited. <laughs> but we will be giving away a set plus some other prizes to someone else as well. We'll do a few people. So one person will get the polychromos, but everyone else who enters, even if you don't earn any bonus points, will be eligible for some other prizes as well, including Prisma Colors and including a few others that you get to choose from. So it's worth at least putting your, your name in, even if um, you don't have enough friends to sort of get on the top 100 scoreboard. There's still prizes there that you can be part of. So check it out. Shane will pop the link in and good luck. Are we done on this part of the train? Have I missed anything? I think I'm done. Um, I will do the back part of the train as well. And then I think, or do we just want to call it there? Because it is, we, how long have we been going for? Three and a half hours. Oh, I think I need to call it a break now because I'm starting to get a little bit dizzy. <laughs> I think three and a half hours of colouring in a row is probably my limit <laughs> without having lunch. So I do want to say thank you to everyone who has joined me. I'm sorry that I didn't like, I, I would love to stop and finish this whole page in the live stream, but as you can see by how much I've coloured, it is just not something I'm, I, I just can't rush something that has this much detail if we're wanting to recreate this level of detail. So, but doing this in the live stream has given you a chance to see in real time just how involved the process is in trying to match this color. The point of this is kind of to show you that, look, aiming for this is pretty ambitious. You can do it, but you need to be patient. And I recommend if you're gonna do it using good pencils like Prismacolors, if you're not up for this level of concentration like what I'm doing, it doesn't mean don't get this book. It's actually a really nice book anyway. I actually really think the pictures in here are really beautiful. It just means you just need to color it another way. Like don't worry about the black lines, just um, color it and enjoy it. And you can use this as a guide, like, you know, with Dumbo, for example, color the ears pink, color him gray. Don't go crazy to the depth that I have of picking the 20 different colors in the gray to get the lighting perfect. You don't have to do that. I just love color and I, obsess over the details because I love that it's 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 that's what I enjoy um so that's something that you can do if you enjoy that but it is not a requirement and I have seen a lot of people color these pages really really beautifully in just a very very simple way so that's just to not deter you from this book because I actually really do like this book um as much as I complain about the paper quality <laughs> But anyway, um, if you have any questions, like anyone who's watching the replay, if you have any questions, keep posting them in the comments. The live chat will be gone, but there will be a comment section on this video when it's up as a replay. And we will be leaving this video up so that you can come back and rewind it and watch it. I've um, got my numbers here. I'll pop um, in the comments or I might even finish working on this page and actually write a full list of them and pop that in my Facebook group so that you can see the whole end result. At some point, if you're not a part of the Facebook group, I'll pop a link in the description so you can join that. I know it's not on YouTube, it's on Facebook and you might not be on there, but if you are, I recommend jumping in that group because it's another way to get to hang out with me and I try to pop in there daily. I don't always get to reply to everyone's pictures, but I at least see them and I try to get involved and answer questions when I can. So it's another way to hang out with me and to just get to hang out with an awesome group of people who are all coloring and learning and just having fun with art. So thank you everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed today and we will be trying to do this once a month. So if you have anything particular you'd like to see in a future live stream, let me know in the comments and let me know what you thought of today. 
And until then, um, I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.